What's up, bikers? Welcome to episode 180. Three guys for a loop there. I didn't say 180. <laughs> Anyways, today's guest, BKXC or Brian Kennedy, however you know him. So pretty sure he doesn't need much of an introduction, but for those of you that may just be getting into mountain biking and new to YouTube, Brian's uh, one of the the OG, uh, what would you call it, vlog style mountain bike creators, something something to that effect. Anyways, um, he's been he's been doing this, and he, we'll let him correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure since about 2016 is whenever I started seeing his post pop up in MTBR forums. Anyways, before we get started, I want to talk to you guys about a couple of things. I have a couple of sponsors, which is unbelievable. I mean, at this point, I just I, honestly, when I first started, who would ever have thought the the like overweight dude with a foul mouth and um, not so great bike riding skills would would get to the point to have a sponsor but this year i'm sponsored by um ari bikes if you're not familiar with them they used to be called fazari and one of the bikes i'm going to be riding is the delano peak and it comes in these two different colors here so the blue and the rose pink i think is what they're calling or something like that rose red dusty rose i have this thing for pink lately but man i wish this was like a little bit more of a hot pink i was having a conversation with my buddies and part of me like still wants to get this because i think it would be kind of fun to like do some crazy shit with but um what do you guys think i was thinking because i'm an xl there's a very low likelihood or it's a much smaller group of people that i could sell this to rather than the blue and blue one later on down the road because basically i'm gonna ride this bike for like a year and then we'll we'll probably move on to something else um whether it's from re or just a different color or something like that so what do you guys think blue or pink let me know in the comments um also those of you guys that aren't familiar with tasco mtb swing by their website and use code biker b1ker save some money they just released these phantom shorts and uh if you watch my vlog on the biker channel the other day the Phantom line is honestly what really got me super stoked off of Tasco stuff. I've always liked them and always had some of their things, but this stuff is so lightweight and coming into summer, it's just, it's, it's what I wore all, all last summer. And that was like hashtag not sponsored, right? They also have a uh, Phantom line of gloves, which are super, super light as well. And they still hold up all day long. So, um, back in the day, I used to wear gloves with big old pads and stuff in them. I, I couldn't imagine wearing gloves without pads, but apparently it works so there you go swing by their website Ooh, apparently i'm burping those of you guys that uh aren't on the camera you would know that would wouldn't know that anyways um so yeah swing by tasco check them out what else there was one more thing i wanted to say oh my god i didn't even bring the tab up so we're gonna try to do this real quick while i'm talking but if you go to apple podcasts and um have read the reviews or haven't read the reviews and thought about maybe writing one yourself that would be super rad because the other day i came by here and took a look and deep and I, what is this <laughs> westicles westicles 13 says i love this pod with robert was scared of the episode length at first but having a two-hour window allows for a lot of organic conversations that i never expected and i'm here for it one of my favorites and always look forward to the next episode. Thanks a lot, Westicles. I really appreciate that. And your name. <laughs> if you if you could, if any of you that are listening that use the Apple, Apple um, podcast app, go swing by, write me a five-star review. That'd be really rad. It helps the channel and well, I mean, it helps the podcast. If you're watching the channel, hit subscribe or thumbs up. That helps the channel. Anyways, let's get Brian on. Let's talk about bikes. What's up, Brian? I'm here. What's up? Dude, it's been a long time since we chatted. Yeah, I'm trying to think of uh, the last biker bar. There was power outages. There was something going on. <laughs> yeah, the the one the one that that power outage one is the one that really like burned me because I was super stoked about doing that uh, that hot wing thing that we were doing. Oh and, yeah! Uh, <laughs> and it was like right when we took the hottest one. Poof! I was gone, and then you're yes. Like, you're left to deal with this. The, you honestly are the only person that probably could have dealt with that other than. Yeah, I was holding Joe. it down. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yes. Took I the heat and that. the podcast and freaking yeah. ran with it. <laughs> Dude, so um, what what's new, man? What have you been up to? Man, a lot of Everstoke stuff. A lot of Everstoke yeah. building. And man, we had this like amazing window 
November was fine, December was fine, and then like January snow, and then waiting for the snow to melt, and then rain and hot and cold. So I've been back up a couple times since the new year, but now it looks like it's finally gonna change and be nice up there. And me and my dad are working on some bathrooms, some like nice bathrooms, and it's a 12 by 12 building that's just a whole big old thing. So it's, a, it's an adventure. Was your dad a contractor or that he's just like a super handy guy or what's the deal there? Whoa, oh, oh. Why is this coming through my phone? Ah. <laughs> Rookie right. mistake. I had I had the YouTube open on my phone, but it was closed. I'm surprised that the YouTube would actually like start up like that. Okay, but yeah, my dad was a union iron worker. So he built skyscrapers and stuff like big time stuff, but Lots of like weekend projects with my uncles and my uncle Dennis was a carpenter and he was always building houses. And so like he would ask my dad to come over and help. But yeah, just a lot of random projects in the backyard that my dad learned from. And he has tons of knowledge, tons of just like you ask him about it, he'll have an idea and, and we figure it out. Yeah, yeah, because he's always like throughout the oh, years. Now you're muted. Sorry, oh. I, I muted my <laughs> Mac instead of actually uh, this. OK, we're good. We're, we're Technical. there, man. 180 episodes, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Man. Hologram, we need the, the Apple Vision Pro. Right, right. Yeah, it'll look like we're in the same room with each other or something. Huh? <laughs> um, yeah, because over the years, I mean, he's helped you with so many different projects. I, I wasn't sure like what, what his background was. Somehow it came up in conversation at my house. Like my wife was asking, like, I think she asked, like, if you had done construction before or something. She's like, he's always building all this stuff. And I was like, no, it's yeah. usually bad. So. Yeah, very much a hobby now where like building the deck at Everstoke on Soulshine Point was kind of my first like kind of doing it by myself. And I kind of mm -hmm. wanted to do it by myself to mess everything up and like figure it out and think through it. Because a lot of times with my dad, I'm just like along for the ride where it's right. like, OK, we're doing this. And I want to like actually like kind of, you know, you, you can follow along so much. But when you have to do it on your own, then you're like, OK, now you're really learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred percent. It's like sitting in the passenger seat versus driving. Yep. Yeah. yeah 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 that's that those are like really good like skills to have though through life you know to be able to i mean and i'm not saying like i mean obviously yeah if you could build a house that'd be great but just being able to like solve problems like that and build things is like it, it's huge yeah doing the plumbing was kind of the first big thing that we did and i totally understand it now i'm not a perfect plumber by any means but uh -huh. i get the whole idea of like, if you have a well, you have to get the water out of the well, then you have to pressurize it because that's what makes, you know, if you open your tap in the bathroom, it, the water has to have pressure. But how does it have pressure if it's coming out of a well? You don't want the well uh, pump to be on all the time. So you need a well tank that keeps the pressure. And it's like kind of like a bicycle pump. You kind of pump it up to keep pressure in it. And it's like all these different things that now yeah. I've not mastered, but I've had my like apprenticeship with a little bit of plumbing. And then now the electrical stuff with the solar panels and the battery and like fuses and GFCI, AFCI and all the code and all that stuff. It's like, it's really cool. Cause like nothing intimidates me now, like which yeah. maybe is worse because I've definitely gotten a little shock here and there of like <laughs> being stupid and not turning off proper things and being like, yeah. oh, that's the price of learning on the job. Yeah, well, the beauty of 120 is it just hurts a little. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, I did a a little bit of a, a apprenticeship with my uncle who was an electrician when I was in high school, and I remember at one point I was like doing some outlet, and apparently it was hot, and I didn't know it. Yeah. Like you know, zapped me, and I'm like, "Hey, you didn't tell me that one's hot." And he's like, his sense of humor was always perfect. It was like, "Oh, that one's hot." Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. FYI. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have some uh, some stuff that we're planning on doing around the house, and um, plumbing is one that like I'm always like nervous about, you know, because it's like when you zip that up inside the wall, yes, like, if it starts leaking, like you can't see it. Like I've done electrical for a long time, so I'm very comfortable with that stuff. But man, I'm nervous about the plumbing. But every time I call, it's like to have somebody do something. Like, oh my God, it's so expensive. So expensive. Yeah, yeah that's a funny point because everything at Everstoke is very accessible. You know, it's out there. Like I can look and see if stuff's yeah. messed up versus actually putting the drywall, painting, and hanging yeah. a picture frame over it. That's very different. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, not sure like what to do. I'm like, 
on one hand, maybe I maybe I do it all and then call a plumber and ask him to like inspect it or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how amenable they are to that of like, oh, I could have just done this versus like a little check. It, that's when you need like a friend of a friend that's a plumber. Yeah. That'd be rad if we had like a YouTube channel where we could just put something out and a bunch of people could maybe tell us, hey, I'm a plumber. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've tried that at Everstoke and it's worked to varying degrees of like, hey, if you do this and that and like yeah. lots of, you know, lots of connections and good, good little bits of help here and there. You would think that stuff like as a person that would be like a, a, a consumer of YouTube rather than a creator, I think that most people would assume that you could put anything out there and like you'd get an answer right away. Yes. Yes. And and it's not really that. I mean, I would imagine if you're Seth, but not like. I know it's true. Yeah. Like I think that original video, me and Aaron buying Everstoke has like 120,000 views ish like that. And there was a lot of emails because I did say like if you're a lawyer and a Sawyer, like that kind of thing and like yeah. just getting a little help and then going through all of it. There was a lot of like high level, like lawyer type people and like, you know, like professional stuff where it's like I build houses. It's like, yeah, I don't have one point eight million dollars to like hire you and build a house kind of thing. Right. So it's like all the lower level kind of help stuff is the, the best. Yeah. What is um at this point you guys have the the tiny house up there yeah. and you have a few campgrounds. I remember originally you guys were talking about some some yurts or something like that. What what's the plan at this point? It seems like it's yeah. like struggled a little so, bit. So the next phase you know, I'm thinking like Aaron's done an awesome job with like all the campsites and they're all pretty nice and flat and level. We got yeah. like some little uh, picnic bench stuff going on. The tiny house has been awesome because now we finally have enough power to like get it warm in the winter. So Sarah mm -hmm. and I stayed for like a week, two weeks ago, I think it was, or whenever it was. And we were, had the heater cranked up. The sun was yeah. shining. So it was like enough oh, to keep awesome. everything going like for the first time because the the sun has just not shown enough for the, the solar panels to get going. And I only have four panels right now. I have 28 in my garage on a pallet ready to go up to Everstoke, but that's a whole nother project. Mm -hmm. But yeah, after, after the bathrooms, I really like the idea of an outdoor kitchen where there's like water and like, uh, like septic, you know, where you could like do run the, uh, uh, what's the thing in sinkerator, the garbage disposal, like that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff, yeah. like where you could do like a cook, like in the hangout area and like have a grill and that kind of stuff. And I, I'm debating how useful that is and how much, you know, is that worth all the time and effort and energy? I think it's pretty awesome, but is it, uh, does that change my, is that like, oh wow, they've got that there. And like, we come out because of that or, you know, improving the trails is always like the thing that I'm want to get to so much and just ride every trail and feel every turn and be like, okay, I'm going to work on this berm. That's all I'm going to do and fix this, this one turn and then oh, mm -hmm. the next one and that kind of thing. Cause yeah, the trails are already so good. It's, we can get them just a couple steps higher. I'm, I'm positive with uh, a yeah. more, more little tuning. Yeah. I think though, like focusing on, on the, the camping experience though, amenities. Cause I, I would imagine like, Actually, let me back up because I was surprised yeah. last year a few times that I was there and other people were there that they um, actually weren't riding the other areas. So yeah. what I was going to say was like my assumption would be most people would come there to go like ride Mills and Huff and Downeyville. But um, not everybody's actually doing that. They are just spending their time like hanging out there and, and totally uh, go and, and do one or two rides or a hike or something like that somewhere else. So. Um, so I don't know. I think that like making that area, like your hangout area, yes. like, super even dialed. more. Yep. I think yeah, having a right. real kitchen, like, like where you could like do your dishes and like prep food and not feel like you're, you're going to get some, some, I don't know, <laughs> pick up some parasite or something. Exactly. Know? Exactly. Yeah. No, you're right. It's been really cool to see groups of people come out and just hang out and just ride the trails. And there's yeah. enough to do of just sitting around doing nothing and riding the trails. And the loops are like 15, 20 minutes. So you go up, you come down, you go up in the morning, you come down. Like, it's just such a neat little spot. 
But yeah, I definitely always emphasize all the different trails and all the different rides. You could stay there for a week easily and ride a bunch of bucket list rides. But, you know, I, I say that message over and over and then you get like emails and comments from people who like are still like, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's like, oh, how, what more do I have to say? I don't know. How much can you put out there until yeah. somebody just has to come? Yeah. Yeah. And I think once, even if you're somebody that's from this area, um, not many people have like really connected the dots between like Mills, Huff and, and Downeyville. A lot yeah. of people have maybe gone to Downeyville on their own or maybe gone to Huff on their own, but like not maybe driven in between the, the two or three. And when I you agree. do that, you really realize like how freaking close they are and how yeah. perfect your location is. Totally. Right. And there's another uh, one on the way, maybe this year, Beckworth Peak. If you go to Trail Forks, you can see that it's like they have two spurs. It's going to be a lollipop loop, maybe mm -hmm. 18 miles, a 3,000 oh, wow. foot climb, I think. But right now they have like sections one, two, and four done. But like section three that goes around the back is probably done if you went out there and looked at it. But I think they just have to kind of finish it and put it on trail mm -hmm. forks. So that's going to be a whole other ride that hopefully it's built within the past couple, you know, built today. So it's got to yeah. be pretty good turns and downhill and that kind of stuff, you would hope. Where's that so uh, so ju just up the road, like eight minutes to Portola. So uh, oh, okay. Portola. just east yeah, I know where that towards is. Reno. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just like a very quick hop in the car and then it's another yeah. one so having like those ah oh, it's it's amazing yeah yeah i um, still haven't done Elwell. you haven't no it's definitely worth getting up there i'll give you that <laughs> yeah yeah i heard you you had some good hike a bike yeah more hiking yeah, than quite, biking quite the uh i i have a, a plan for this year maybe maybe uh we could do it together i want to go from pack saddle to everstoke yeah yeah so that would be i feel really like cool. we could get like somebody just to drop us off at packer saddle and really yes. it's not that far of a ride to get over to ll from there yeah because it's like that LL and then right over yeah there. it's that realignment of the the old uh pacific crest trail right that's actually like a legal piece of single track and then maybe yeah. you have to hop on something that's not quite legal and then you're there yeah i mean if you're looking at trail forks i think there's some fire roads and stuff like that that you yeah. can take for sure so um you don't have to do anything illegal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you don't want to, but, but if, if it's a nice single track, by accident, then exactly. You're on the PCT, that would be weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be a sick point to point for sure. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, like you could even do just to like, like if we were gonna do it for the sake of a video, like we could do yeah. it like tower, go to the top to the tower. And then from yes. the tower to yes. town, but the town being yep. Gray Eagle. Exactly, know? exactly. Yeah, that is good. That tower is pretty neat too. Me and Ever, uh, me and Aaron did that a while back, and it's pretty yeah. neat. It's it's funny how long it takes you to go up, and then you're boom, you're back down immediately. Oh, it's, it's ridiculous how fast you get down that compared <laughs> to how long it takes you to get up there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> did you go up the to the 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 top? Yeah, yeah. We we yeah. climbed up I and did looked not. out and. <laughs> I got to the ladder and was like, that's good for me. <laughs> it was windy too. It's like pretty, like pretty nice, pretty intense. Yeah. I asked one of my buddies to carry my GoPro up there for me. I was like, yeah, I'm not going out that. There is like, I am, I, I had enough jitters just standing on the ground yeah. at the bottom of the ladder because it's like both directions. Like the peak is like you're on the, the ridge line yes, there, you know? Yes, yes. Oh, it's yeah. at the top. It's I, I really like that stuff like that still exists. There's this hike in uh, Zion National Park called Angel's Landing that I did with mm -hmm. Single Track Sampler. And it is definitely like people are dying on that hike. It's so straight up. It's so goofy. It's so crazy. Yeah. But it's still allowed. It's still available for people to go out and do. It's like... That's freedom. That's America. Yeah. We we should have the biggest soda pop we can drink and we can get killed on a crazy hike in a national park. Yeah. Yeah. I saw something on Facebook the other day that was uh, it was like a picture of Half Dome like in the 60s or something like that. Oh. The guy was like talking about like, yeah, you didn't know passes. We went up. We saw like three people that day. And, yeah. You know, like it only took I us think... like 15 minutes to go up the, the cables because yeah. there's nobody there. And there was a time before they even had cables where like people just like shimmied up it somehow. It's yeah. just like crazy.
Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Um, well, I mean, as as I just said, I mean, I'm not crazy about heights. I don't think. Yeah. So that's not my that's not my bag of chips there. But that's for sure. Have you been um, any? Have you been to Half Dome, like near it at the bottom of that I thing? Have you done? I haven't been to that park yet, honestly. And every oh, time wow. I talk about it, my my wife's like, "Are you serious?" And it's kind of one of those yeah. things where it's like, it's so close, but. <clears throat> This is the problem with being a mountain biker is that you spend yeah. every weekend trying to do another ride, right? Yes, yes. And, and then it's like, oh, when am I supposed to do these other things? You yeah, know? totally. Yosemite's pretty amazing. It's definitely, it took me a long time to, to visit as well. But yeah, just going into the valley, hiking around, walking around, doing little baby hikes or doing big hikes. It's well worth it. Even if you just drove in for a day, it's a yeah. long ass drive, like four hours there, four hours back. But like... It's pretty amazing. It lives up to the hype. A little busy in the busy spots, but otherwise you can get out on a trail and there's actually not a ton of people. Yeah, I would imagine. I um, I got close. I went down there and rode that 007. That's pretty yeah. close there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. One of these days, I'm sure I'll get around yeah. to it. <laughs> there's so many things to do, man. You know what I mean? There it's is. like you, you really like, I mean, even you. Like your job is traveling around, going to places, and there's still, I'm sure, a boat yeah. that you'd love to go to. Unlimited. Like my my coverage of Washington is like abysmal. I've been to like two or three places in Washington, and, and you know, yeah. there's Bellingham. There's like tons of different stuff that I have totally been derelict in my duties of of seeing. So That's it's nice funny. though. It's nice to actually have like a bunch of stuff that I still want to go do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the I, I put on like Facebook or would instagram the like hey what would you ask brian and one of the people said that when's he gonna come to the pnw and actually yeah. like, ride what we have up here yeah the real deal but it has to be legal too that's like kind of right. the thing with a lot of those places the best stuff might not be legal and it's like i want to keep it on the keep it on the the up and up yeah yeah no i know i definitely know how that goes i've done a few videos where um I showcased some things, but I, I you were didn't in New Zealand. say where I was at at all, huh? <laughs> you said you were in New Zealand on that one. Yeah, there was that one. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty good with California license plates driving by. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I did one where um, I, I showed a bunch of, of stuff that wasn't le legitimate. But what I, I kind of talked about in the video about like, you know, sometimes that's how it has to happen. Sometimes yeah. these trails, that's how they become legal, you know. Yeah, like of course. Places like Bend or or Sedona was all illegal trails that yep. turned into, you know, like mountain bike meccas, you could say, so to yeah. speak. You know, like, so. More and more. <clears throat> you know, I went up to Ashland this summer, and uh, I think you said something about this in your video as well, mm. but Jabberwocky, I don't think it's as good as, like, the hike. <laughs> I think it's yeah, it's all conditions like that. That's so funny because I I went back and I only put it on Patreon because I was so negative because people get yeah. so bent out of shape and it's like, do you trust me or not? Have you watched yeah. a million of my videos and seen where <laughs> I I love so much? But if I actually hate on something, do I have no credibility? Everyone's like, oh, the trail. What are you putting in trail work? What are you doing that? It's like. Do, you have to believe me at some point, right? Like just because right. I'm negative, like, oh, I'm making it up or like shine it on and say, no, you should do this. But yeah, the Jabberwocky, that's like my nemesis for sure, because there's so many people that absolutely love it. And I'm like, I, it just it's destroyed. It can't it should be built built out of concrete or asphalt. Like it just you can't have like 10,000 people riding it in a summer and, and it, it exists. It'll just just get destroyed. I would imagine whenever it's like dialed, it's it's probably great. It has, and to I would be. also imagine that if you live there, it's even better. Because for me, one of the things was there's so many jumps where if your speed is too fast, you're going to be off the trail. You know what I mean? And there's so many like catch berms that are on the the downside of the hill where it's like if you cook that thing, you're going down. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like little getches, lots of little things where if you do it yeah, 10 times yeah. and you really know it and then, yeah, like, oh, it just rained yesterday. Perfect. The trails running right. good. Right. I really liked time warp though. That was like, just like a rocket ship. Did you ride that while you were there? Yeah, that was, it was in terrible condition as well, but it was amazing. Like it was yeah. like perfectly, like I just went over all the braking bumps and I had a blast. 
And yeah. it's just it's just crazy. I mean, I could rant about this forever. It's like, I think there's two or three shuttle companies and it's like, there's a whole mountain bike economy and then yeah. you come and this is these are the trail conditions. Like, obviously it can't be perfect. It takes a lot of work to keep stuff up. I'll, I'll make every caveat possible, but yeah. like, it's almost like North Star where it's like, you know, it's just gonna be messed up and garbage and you still <laughs> yeah. have fun, I guess. Like, yeah. uh, I don't know. I felt like they have potential to do a lot more on the top side of that mountain than because mm -hmm. and maybe it was just because the way that our day went but we took a a, a fire roadish kind of climb or yeah road down on the the right side instead of going up towards time, time, time warp yeah and a lot of elevation was lost that wasn't really on single track and then totally. uh i don't know i just felt like like the only like really fun descent, at least for me, was time warp getting down to like that mid mountain spot. And then it was a bunch of fun stuff there. But it seemed like, man, there's a lot of elevation to. to yes. Like, in between. Yeah. Top. That could just a be massive like, so mountain. More. Like, yeah, there could be a ton more. So much different little stuff. And that's all it takes time and advocacy and money and yeah. all the things. But for what it is that, yeah, cat's eye or cat's purr or something. There's something in yeah. the middle that was a pretty good blue trail that's like on the edge, kind of Oak Ridge style, super yeah. fast, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of stuff there. I mean, I, I, I really like those cities where you can um, get dropped off and go all the way back to town, like like yeah. Bended or Downeyville or Ashland. Like, it's really cool that, that um, I, I like that experience of like finishing your ride, actually rolling up to you know, wherever you're going to eat or have some, some drinks or whatever. And like, it's priceless. Yeah. yeah. Cause I get so worn out. Like, okay, now it's five miles back to town or whatever. And you're right. just like, Oh, come on. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I mean, that's one of those things that's nice even about wherever Stoke is with Mills peak. Um, I mean, it's so close to town at that it's point. In the mix. So. Yeah. That'd be cool if there was, um, somebody that was doing some kind of shuttles there that was like actually in Gregel or something like yes, that. Yes. Yes. And that's the thing. It's that's what the Sierra Buttes trail stewardship is all about is creating an economy in the mountains. Right. So it's like if, if this Beckworth peak takes off and people start riding it more then maybe there is room for somebody to get a shuttle van and okay, 10 AM it's Mills peak 11, you know, AM yeah. is Beckworth. It did that. You know, you start being able to hustle and make it work. Yeah. Yeah, we usually do odd man out on on mills and then yeah and the way i pitch that place to everybody is like honestly i think it's my favorite trip my favorite ride in our area i i really uh, do yeah. but it's like it's peddly but it's when you do it a couple of laps in a row you get to know like every yeah. like, oh hammer here don't hammer there hammer yes. here don't hammer there and you like, don't get caught out yeah and you can make that run so fast and, yeah. and it's just like i just love how much it like uh how active it is you're yeah. like constantly like popping over this or whipping your like handlebars right left right left yeah and like, way more very... rocky than i remember i always remember being like oh yeah it's kind of flowy like mount huff is like the more yeah. flowy and i'm like yeah it's similar and then i'm riding and i'm like whoa okay this is way more <laughs> active like you said yeah 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 no it definitely is it's and and in my mind it's always like there's this one small section on the bottom that reminds me of of bend or oregon mm -hmm. and um and in so in my head it's like oh once you get past the the middle ridge part it's all flowy and smooth yeah but really yeah the, the spot that's like bend to me is like 100 yards long <laughs> yes yes so it is continuing to be like like rocky the whole way so yeah yeah yeah, no, good stuff there. So, man, I was writing the the show notes, and um, dude, you've done a lot over the years, man. Like, if you're like, you started the channel, you quit your job, yeah, you um, befriended like Seth and Alex. You guys did a bunch of stuff. You got the van, went across the U.S. Yeah, got married, bought Everstoke, started a components company. Yeah. Is this is this all kind of what you were dreaming of whenever you started 
Definitely. I think everyone dream, like, doesn't everyone have the dream of like buying a piece of land, like in building trails? Like I've had that dream forever. Like the second I started mountain biking, like, oh, wouldn't it be cool? So like that was always a possibility in the background. And then like trail one, it's like starting something up that could live beyond me, that could maybe be like a, just something that works in the background eventually 10, 20 years from now. That's like just cranking out my little retirement check of 2000 bucks a month or something. And mm -hmm. that would be so cool. And yeah. So, and then meeting, you know, someone that I love so much on, you know, through the channel was just fantastic because it wasn't happening any other normal conventional way. <laughs> and so it's just like all these little things that have been amazing. It's actually like eight years, pretty close to the day because I think my first video was like April 4th, 2016 so i must have been filming that video right around now if it's march 28th or something so yeah. it's it's right around that anniversary eight years in pretty pretty amazing i can't remember the video but for some reason i can picture the thumbnail because you had like a red like tight xc kind yeah of yeah i think loon lake maybe was one of the first ones yeah and it's like that blue lake in the background and yeah my camera overheated and stuff. Yeah, it's like I remember those days so vividly and it's been a lot a long time. A lot of things have changed in the landscape over over um over that time, you know, as far as like the way that YouTube is and um it's kind of crazy, you know. Always always evolving, always changing and just like trying to stay on it, trying to trying to see what's next, yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you think that um you'll be like, do you, do you have any plans to kind of like change your format or because realist, like not realistically, like generally speaking, you're still pretty much doing the same thing. They're like, yeah, like go out, ride somewhere new, talk about it. Right. You totally. know? But yeah, I think I always think about like maybe the format doesn't change, but as much as like the stakes need to change, need to get higher, it needs to be more dangerous, more crazy, a longer ride. Oh, the hardest thing I've ever done. You know, like whatever gets people more interested and more excited and like, oh man, did you see that? Like that shareable, mm -hmm. that very much like, whoa, kind of thing is really the goal for every single video. But of course, not every single video is going to happen when I'm like, ooh, I think this would be a good ride. And I'm kind of just out there surveying the, the landscape of rides that I've done and doing new rides and just showing off a bunch of stuff for normal people that they can go out and ride someday. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's like if I, you know, every year I should be going back to Portal and being like, okay, I'm going to do it faster this time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 It's like, you know, or maybe there's something where you could go back and there's like a, a different story to tell this time. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah. I always, I think about that a lot. And, uh, what is, yeah. What's the, what gets people excited? What, what gets people hooked? And right now, some of it, so much of it is the shorts, right? You just get sucked into the little shorts and stuff. And, for me, I get sucked into like Twitter and all these little things and everyone's getting just pulled and pulled apart. But I do sit down and watch some of my favorite YouTube channels still and like sit down in front of the TV and take the time out and that kind of thing. So there's mm -hmm. still room, but man, all those little tiny moments when you're on the toilet, when you're doing this, when you're doing that, they get sucked up by the, by the, the, the little morsels. Yeah. It's much easier to consume and walk away. Yeah. Um, but I still like the stories of the the longer content and, and I'm okay to like, I, and I've always been this way. It's probably just cause I'm like ADD or whatever, but like, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll start something and walk away. Like, yeah, I'll start a, like one of your videos and be eating a, a, my lunch, which takes me yes. like six minutes. And then I'll just yeah. pause it and walk pause, away. Pause, come back. Like, yeah, exactly. And, and that it could works, be that come works. back like three days later. Like it's yeah. not necessarily like an hour later, but totally. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. You were talking about Trail One a minute ago, and um, how, people that maybe not be from, familiar with it, a certain portion of the sales of every piece of, of equipment that you sell goes to a specific um, trail network or whatnot. Do you think that you'll have something that actually contributes to Everstoke? Probably not because it's a little incestuous, you know, like mm -hmm. it's like, hey, give me this money back where it's kind of about going out because we we try to do nonprofit 
uh, mm-hmm. trail associations. And there's so many nonprofit trail associations where Everstoke is like, we want to make a profit if we can, but yeah, everything yeah. is a, a dollar. So it's like, if something costs $3 that we're giving a dollar to like the trails kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, so many of the items have specific names like the Crockett handlebars or the Rockville stem and those, that dollar from each goes to those specific places. But then if it's like a t-shirt or a water bottle, we have like a, like a generic fund that we like look out for and who we can donate that money to wherever kind of thing. So we're, mm-hmm. we're doing good, man. We did 4,000 bucks to the Crockett Hills very recently, a couple weeks ago, which is awesome from all the Crockett handlebars over the past few years. And it, it's pretty neat to, to see it go. And hopefully it, it does its job. Money is such a weird thing, you know, it's like, okay, there you go. I hope it, hope it helps. Yeah. Yeah. What triggers the like, the check is it like a time or it's just like yeah we get around to it or yeah we've tried to like do like every thousand dollar increments and then certain stuff like comes in because we get like a bulk order like revel has a few different items on their oem bikes so it's like we've got grips and different stuff where it's like oh all of a sudden we did a thousand you know handlebars because revel put them on their bikes or whatever so it's kind of a neat thing so we keep we keep an eye on it and once it hits a certain level because it's like giving away 450 bucks is it's okay, but if we have a thousand to give away, the thousand dollar range is like really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. How does that happen? Like, like I don't know why I'm such a fucking adult, man. I'm like, so how does that happen with taxes for these people? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like for us, it should be like a write off because it's a donation to a nonprofit organization, and then for them, they're a nonprofit, so they can get donations and like, oh, I think yeah, they just huh? get it get it not taxable and and we try to do all of it through trail forks as well so like if you ever go on trail forks and you see like the karma and the donations like we encourage all the trail organizations like the, the one in kenya doesn't have it set up through trail forks yet but uh like try to go through trail forks so it's very transparent for us like hey we actually did give this money away here's the accountability of it versus like we say we did it yeah yeah i'm sure like that money like spends very well in somewhere like Kenya. It's uh, ridiculous. Like I didn't think there was that much of a force multiplier, but yeah, they said that like, we'll probably do $3,000 this year and they can have two full-time trail builders for $3,000 in a year. Like it's like utterly ridiculous, like crazy. Yeah. Man, I wish we could live on $3,000 in California. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm like, sweet, uh, I could pay my mortgage for one month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If that, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So um, how did the thing happen with Revel? How does that, I mean, that, that must have been exciting for to like. Yeah. So Jeff from Worldwide Cyclery has a great relationship with the Revel guys because they, they, they would, uh, so Revel's direct to consumer, I think, but maybe they like had demo bikes on Worldwide Cyclery or even sold the bikes through World, Worldwide Cyclery. So they had a really good relationship because it's direct to consumer and just kind of doing their marketing thing, helping them out. So they've always had a great uh, relationship. Right. So he's like, hey, we got some stuff. When When's the next time you could put some OEM gear on your bikes? And of course, it's always like, you know, a year away always because of all the different, you know, orders and all that stuff. So I'm pretty sure we've got some bikes right now that are, that Revel has some stuff on, but I, I yeah, just don't I remember all, exactly. I the... made a, a post yesterday or something yeah, about nice. that. He's like, very cool. Saying like, basically the reason that Revel is doing it is because he did it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's crazy. Cause it's like, we talked about it two years ago and then it's like a year and then this goes by and then that slots in. It's like, man, all this stuff just is, uh, it's, crazy how long like i think we started talking about trail one in like 2017 like and didn't really launch until 2021 like late i think so pretty uh long long lead times for sure yeah yeah are you happy with the products that you have or oh man continue to develop or what do you definitely yeah yeah i'm way less involved in the day-to-day meetings and all that stuff like i totally thought i could do it like oh i'll be the marketing guy and do all this and just like immediate flame out of like god doing my channel doing everstoke doing this being married you know all that stuff it's like quite ridiculous so like i'm not involved as much in the new product development as much as i was but i'll still like name things and like add stuff but yeah we got good pedals and stuff the the 
better pedals coming, all different stuff that we're always working on. And it's, it's pretty cool because the handlebars are great. The grips are great. The grips are like my favorite grips for sure. I think anybody who actually rides with them loves them. And uh, once you get your, your fingers on them, you'll love them. So yeah, it's nice. There's always little things like, like you remember early on in my channel, like I did like the changing towel and stuff. And like, I had like uh, the mat and the, all that stuff. I love those kinds of things too, but they're so bulky and they're so like heavy to ship and all that stuff where it's like, ah, are we really winning if we're having to sell this thing for like 80 bucks? And so yeah. there's lots of little stuff like that. Toolkits and pouches. Like we've tested so many things. We ride with it, we try it and we're like, ah, eh, this is kind of, kind of crappy. And there's just a lot of companies out there that most companies use like the same four companies to make, the ha make their handlebars, make their grips. And, yeah. and so they make like a toolkit and you like look at it and you're like, Hey, what if we added like a four millimeter instead of a five here? And you can kind of tweak it, make it your own. And then the, mm -hmm. we've, we've seen a lot of that stuff and we've kind of like passed on a lot of stuff too, trying to make sure it's mm -hmm. the best, best possible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you, you want the brand to have a, a quality marker you know sure. like a reputation you know and and um yeah it'd be real easy to go flood it with a bunch of shit you yeah. know it's been awesome but, that's a that's really such a huge thing that like you know insecurity totally was worried about people like uh eh, without ever touching it or feeling it but i think we've like the proof is in the pudding kind of thing when you put it out there it's it's awesome and it has been and we've had so many good reviews and any little feedback we always take in and we always kind of like think about and try to tweak. Yeah. Yeah. I I'd say more than anything, the product that I see the most is your handlebars. Yeah. It's so out there. It's so easy to see. Yeah. 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 And, um, I don't know. I haven't looked at the pricing or anything like how, what do they run? So man, I, I think it's uh one twenty ish for the carbon and 59 for the aluminum. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Aluminium. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean that's a that's a really good price for a, a carbon bar. Yeah, definitely, it's very well placed. Like all of our stuff is like pretty. Uh, it's in that upper tier level at the bottom, <laughs> you know, like competitively yeah. priced at the upper tier for like you know a made in California stem, uh, made in the USA kind of thing. That's like one twenty as well, or one fifty. I'd have to look. Yeah, yeah, right on, man. What um. <clears throat> Somebody says you need purple grips, so. <laughs> yeah, we definitely take in all the feedback and it's like, we had a ton of people asking for blue and then it's like, you get three people asking for purple, those might be the three people that buy it. You have to like right, order a right. thousand or maybe 250 or something. There's a minimum order and yeah. they're like, we're sitting on these grips forever. You better, you better be good for at least 50 grips if you want a right. special color. I feel like blue is a pretty solid, solid color though. I'm sure that. You're yeah, we did blue it. It did work. The blue was pretty good and blue and orange, black and gray. And uh, yeah, I like the, the gray very much so. Yeah, yeah. I, I had some gray grips on, on that. I really like the Aury stuff, but since Lizard Skins bought them, they don't have as many colors as they used to. Ah, so. interesting. Feeling like I need to pick another grip. <laughs> Come on over. I'll send you. I'll send you a pair. I actually had those up there are your trail one hell, hell, hell's gate. I think. Hell's gate. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, collectible untouched first run. No, those, have, those have definitely been very used. I used the hell out of them. The only nice. complaint that I didn't like the little, uh, thumb tabby thing. I don't know what you call it. The neural, like kind of like, yeah. uh, yeah. Like it's like a, yeah. yeah. And not because it like did anything just because I just didn't care for the way it looked. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, totally. That's all part of it. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, no, they were great grips. I like the uh the the diameter of them because yes. um I I personally like like bigger grips and thick uh, boy. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the grips that are out there are really, really skinny. And whenever I'm holding them, they just feel like I feel like I'm holding the bar with nothing on it. Yes, That's the best way totally. I can explain it, you know? And it's just going to run out quicker too. Like, it's like, you're just going to wear through them and stuff. Yeah. You remember yeah. being a kid? I remember being a kid and like thinking that I rode my bike a lot and then seeing my friend's grips and how my friend's grips were like gone. And I'm like, Jesus, I don't ride my bike at all, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like when I was like eight years old, like, whoa, these kids are tearing up their bikes. Yeah, it's always it's always surprising to me whenever you you've worn a set of grips out and you look at it and you're like, wow, this is like 
All I'm doing is holding it. You know? Yeah, exactly. That. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like your tires make sense, but you're like, this is just, yeah. Yes, it's, it's the tires are strange. going through absolute hell and they still kind of look good. Right? Yeah, it definitely takes some work to get those things beat up. But, um, <clears throat> oh, shoot. I'm sure probably turquoise is probably another one of those colors, like that Yeti, Yeti kind of yeah. thing. I feel like everybody's Neesh. always looking for that teal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so over the, the years, um, earlier you mentioned, Alex, you guys haven't um, haven't done any kind of collaboration stuff in a while. What's, yeah. what's going on with that guy? Yeah, he's still out there chugging. We were hoping to get an international trip going last year and that kind of uh fell apart a little bit so that was kind of like ah oh. but uh yeah hopefully this year we could do something there's always something always thinking of stuff and like yeah it's always always fun to ride with him like it's like the second we get on the bike and start going like the fun level really does double and like it's just it's always awesome whether it's on video or not it's it's yeah. too good you uh, you were talking about an international trip. You did didn't you do a, a Peru trip or something like that with your yeah? Your so I did Peru last year around this time in Israel and uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia and uh, <laughs> Spain last year. So I was uh, I did did some good trips. Oh, wasn't Peru one of your like your with 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 um like with people as well though, right? Like with Yeah, uh, exactly. So like uh I think I promoted it. It was Wandering Wheels, uh Matt Yaki from Oh yeah, and I went to Canada as well uh last summer too. I did a bunch of stuff. But yeah, I think I promoted it and I think there was people on the trip that maybe had never heard of me, but then a few people that did come on the trip just to, you know, to come along. Yeah. And then you did the the Spain as well. Do you feel like that that um those trips whenever you're going on them, do you feel like like it's it's easy to or how am I, how do I, how do I word this? <laughs> do you get the right skill set of people on the trips? Like because because there's a yeah. lot of people that are watching. Like I always worry. I would be worried. Like oh, there's people that that watch me. I think especially because I'm bigger and they're like oh, if that guy can do it, I can do it. And then they'll maybe totally. come to a group ride with me. And then they're like oh, I didn't realize like this is actually what you're riding. You yeah. Know what I mean? Exactly. The Peru trip was so exotic, I think, and so ridiculous. And like that thought of like we we slept at 12,000 feet every night. So I think that was enough to like really like sort out people and maybe more yeah. people that probably could have done it were scared and just the remoteness and the yeah, it's it was so exotic that like it, it didn't uh, didn't do too bad. But yeah, a lot of like my chasing epic trips awesome i've always loved them but there was almost always one person that just like blew up after the first day and like couldn't do yeah. it and it's like oh man it's so brutal they, the vacation they paid the money and then the embarrassment like you just want to yeah. like go home and not be seen again kind of thing and it's like it is a very very tough thing of like what what you think versus what you get and what it is and all that stuff but all these trips they make it pretty dang clear you, that's probably the 99 percent of the emails that you know uh Chasing Epic has to enter, Basque MTB, Wandering Wheels. They all have to just, am I fit enough? I don't know. Maybe you are. Maybe not. Like, you know, just having some kind of yardstick of hard trails that you've ridden. How long can you go for a ride? And then yeah. you can lie to yourself. You can lie to the guide. And then you get out there and we all find out what you're made of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I usually try to ask people, like, what's your normal mileage and elevation? And that yeah. gives me, like, at least, a like, a baseline of probably totally. where they're at i mean it doesn't tell you skill set like why no, but at totally. least it'll tell you like okay well are they gonna like be able to climb the three thousand yeah. feet that we need to climb that day or like i know and i know it it's four days in a row or i know? can't imagine i cannot imagine being a guide like it just yeah. it's basically my nightmare job like yeah. you're doing the thing you love but you're always worried about all these other people you're having to take care of people like when they do stupid stuff and like ask for like ugh, always putting on the smiley face, like that would be uh, my version of hell. Yeah. Yeah. So kudos that's, that's to the, the mountain bike guides out there for sure. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. It's definitely, um, yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. Like this is like going down the mental rabbit hole of how that could play out for me. I'm like, yeah, I, I like showing people around, but definitely, um, I don't think like that big of a group and then also being 
like where they, they paid you. You know what I mean? Like yes. whenever you're yes. like they flew, fellow they took a vacation off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. not like Europeans, you know, they get eight weeks of vacation. Who cares? But in American, yeah. you get one week and you're like one week for Christmas and one week to do something you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's um like I said, it's like one thing, it's like if you're you're meeting up with some like like in our case, like another YouTuber that comes out, you know it's totally different when that person like paid for it. You know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Like if I showed somebody like a shitty experience, they'd be like, man, that guy, Robert sucks for a guy. You know, <laughs> why would he it. think that would even be good? We just did this and that. And right? it's like, yeah. So many of the trails that I ride that I really love, like, uh, uh, one of the recent on YouTube goat camp was like this just crazy chunk like so many people in the comments were like wow, I didn't think that was ever a trail. I know that trail is a hiking trail and it's like, yeah, most people would just, get over the bars and that's it. And then you just have to hike down the whole way kind of thing where it's like, I really love that, but there's no way in hell I would ever almost take anyone else on it. You know, you yeah. have to be like better than me before I'm going to take someone down that. Yeah. I think I forgot to comment on that. There was a few years back when we were going to Sedona, um, oh. RC, RC wrote yeah. that like yeah. the day after we all, it was either the day after or the day before that we I think all it was before. Down. Because he, or, or yeah, because I remember he, he he did a comment or he texted me. I forget if it was a comment or a text. Uh, he said, I showed up to the Sedona Mountain Bike Fest the next day, like battered and bruised. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I think we he maybe he rode South Mountain with us and then the next day he did that ride and then we yeah. all met up in, in Sedona. Yeah. And uh, I just remember him, that was like the joke for like the, the weekend was like, well, it ain't goat camp. So, yeah. You know? <laughs> So that one, that yeah, one was definitely so good. pretty intense, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's very intense, but awesome. I love that stuff. And man, that's that's the greatest thing about this whole YouTube journey, huh? Like RC, and it's like all these guys that we've met and gals along the way, and then just have this like cool friendships and camaraderie that I would have never made if I was just still sitting at my desk and maybe I would have gone on some group ride at some point, or maybe I would have watched, you know, Seth do a video about some getaway thing and I would join it or something, but yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's, um, it's it, there, there's definitely like parts of it that I never had any kind of like thought about for the future. Like I didn't think about Pretty much all my friends have something to do with my YouTube channel at this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, and um, it, it, and I, I think that's partially like a mountain biker problem as well, just because like you want to ride so much that you pretty much end up spending your time with all mountain bikers because they want to ride so much, yeah, you yeah. know? And if you don't ride, then it's like, I don't know, what am I going to talk to you about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Bitcoin's no, I, up. Huh? I said Bitcoin's up. Yeah, right. That's the, the other topic of conversation. So <laughs> nerd talk. Um, dude, don't even get me started on the Bitcoin stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this because you, you were in in IT, so to speak, as well. Like, yeah, a long time ago. I remember. I remember the story. I remember the story. First came out, and one of my buddies was like, "Dude, you want to mine that stuff?" And I was like. What do you gotta do? Because I had all these servers running for like game servers and stuff. And yeah. He's like, yeah. Dude, you what just games? Mine. Um, at the time it was probably like, like return to castle Wolfenstein. Oh uh, yeah. Just like multiplayer server stuff. Um, yeah. counter-strike stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Team fortress. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's, I was like, so like, what do you gotta do? And he's like, I don't know. You just like put this app on there. It runs. And it's like, so was it like, how long does it take? You know? And he's like, I don't know, man, you can like make a Bitcoin in like a couple of weeks. I'm like, sweet. How much is that worth? And he's like a quarter. <laughs> You yeah, know, and I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I was like, I don't give a shit about a quarter. You yeah. Know? And then there's a point when they're selling for fifty thousand dollars a piece, and I'm like, oh my god, all insane. The I could it <laughs> really is. It's insane. Like you hear about it, and like, oh, it's just there was a like a private torrent site that I was on years ago, and the title of the thread in there was effing Bitcoin, and it's like. <laughs> It was year after year, like people would repost the thread because then all of a sudden it's like, what is going on? It was three dollars. It was eight dollars. It's three hundred. Yeah. It's seventeen. It's and then it's down and it's like this whole craziness of uh, something else. It's something else. 
Do you think that um, that that kind of of um, currency will take hold and like ultimately be like the world currency? I hope so. I think I, I definitely this is like my nerdiest thing of like I love the idea of separation of money and state. Right. Like yeah. the separation of church and state was like ridiculous. You can never imagine if you're like a 12th century peasant that God wasn't involved with politics. So yeah. now, you know, all the dirty politicians have control over the money. So they're going to do what dirty politicians do and debase the money forever. And that's why we're not we don't have, you know, you, you think about our lifetime of like. What's the cheapest soda you remember? Like I remember 25 cent soda in a vending machine outside of Safeway for like the yeah. Safeway, you know, style soda. But you're just, you're probably only a couple years older than me. And maybe yeah, you remember 15 cent soda, 20 yeah, cent soda? I think I, I remember like a 25 cent one. And okay. it was like, uh, like it was like in some like, like gas station. Like yes. they still had like the old glass bottles and it was like, oh yeah, you can get one of those for a quarter. A quarter, you know? yeah. yeah. But man, I mean, our entire life, a quarter has been almost nothing, you know, like you could yeah. never get anything. It's just crazy what it just just keeps on going. And then you hear, you know, stories from your parents and you're like, it doesn't make sense. How was that only five cents? It just it doesn't add up. And then you're like, oh, OK, over over time, it does add up that everything gets inflated away. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. It's weird that like like living through it though you know what i mean yeah in your mind, in your mind for some at least for me like certain things are still the same price yeah and then until i'm there you know and Shocking. it's like like i don't know let's just say like a foot long sandwich at subway is my five dollars in my head for the rest of my yes. life you know and it's like what is it I now it's like 12 like, bucks or something dude it's like almost 20 you know <laughs> If you get a sandwich and a, like a soda, the drink, a yeah, chips or something or whatever, it's like holy yeah. shit, man. Yeah, the other one. I mean, these are like out outcast examples, even for yeah. our day. But I remember in high school uh, on Thursdays, Tuesdays or Thursdays, the McDonald's near us would do twenty nine cent hamburger, thirty nine cent cheeseburger. Do you remember yeah. that deal? Did they ever have that around you? Like so, yeah. those and days I, I we would like load more. up. I remember it more with Taco Bell because like Taco Bell was like 29 cents or something like that. Yeah, like 29, you're right. I think I remember 59. Yeah, 59 yeah. for a taco maybe. Crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. we can do $59 for a taco eventually when we just let the let our yeah. nice little 2% inflation every year. This this is the one here. This is the, this is the one that's going to get everybody all fired up. MTV Rad Dad yeah. says when everyone gas was below a, do a dollar. My I, aunt used to live in Oakley and she would drive to Brentwood, which is like seven, eight miles away because it was like 89 cents instead of like 95 cents. Oh man, <laughs> that stuff is so brutal. The 10, yeah, like even even 10 cents a gallon is a dollar 30, you know? Yeah. But yeah, ga gas is the ultimate craziness of like, a few weeks ago it was $3.60 at the yeah. cheapo gas station. Now I just did $5.10 at the regular yeah. gas station. It's like, what is going on? It's gonna like we'll go double digits soon enough. I think we'll be it'll be ten dollars a gallon. They'll have to move all the things over, yeah. and it'll just be crazy. But yeah, I remember uh, in third grade I went into like the little gas station near me. Like I grew up in Cordelia, so it's like there's nothing there except for a gas station. And I remember one of my classmates saying like she went in for her mom and she said one dollar on pump number seven. <laughs> like when it was like gas was probably 95 cents or whatever at that yeah. time but I, i'll never forget that i was just like marina has it she's just doing a dollar to get along and hey a dollar that, that's a gallon of gas you go freaking 15 miles or 20 miles yeah yeah oh my i always think about because my truck has a 36 gallon tank so i'm like man it would be 36 dollars oh, back then for yes. me to fill my tank and yes. right now and it's like 225. Yes, you know? insane, insane. Yeah. And then the magic of that, like, uh, you know, I'm into all the solar power and the battery stuff and how my, uh, oh, dang, I hope I get this right. So I think one gallon of gas has 33 kilowatt hours of energy in it, like potentially, okay. versus that big ass battery that I installed at Everstoke has 14 mm -hmm. kilowatt hours of energy in it. So it's like, 
that big ass battery is 300 pounds and you can't move it around, but a gallon of gas is like eight pounds and you can move yeah. it around. It has like almost three times the amount of energy. Like gasoline is a friggin' miracle. It's insane. Yeah. So like the battery technology really, it has a long way to go, but everything's exponential right now with technology. So it'll, it'll be yeah. in six months or three years or whatever. Everything will be solved. We'll be good. I read something about like, like, uh, the Livermore Labs like had something going on there where they like figured out like fission or something like that. That's yeah, I think where, fusion. Fusion yeah. is the one that we're working. Fission is the current nuclear technology, but fusion okay. is just like so absolutely no, so ridiculous. Fusion thing that they had like some like very abstract way that they they kind of got it pinned down where it's like Yeah. You'll For like see a that microsecond in like 50 years, you know? Yeah, but exactly. That'll be the time that'll be like kind of like you know back to the future where you put mr fusion on the back of your yeah. car and you're like, yep, unlimited I'm energy you know? the sun the sun is doing it all day every day for the next like however many billion years so yeah. we should be able to figure it out too and supposedly yeah. like according to the laws of physics you should be able to like have fusion in a battery like in your phone like it, it can be very small it can be very big yeah that'd be crazy what would you know what, what's the world like if you don't have to um Pay for power anymore you know yeah I mean? it's huge like uh there's a lot of, like desalinization there's all these things that are like you couldn't even imagine like wrap your head around like cleaning the atmosphere with pollution you could just do so many things that require so much power that would just be like kind of trivial yeah yeah like building building cities on the ocean floor like stuff like that that's like what why would you even do it but hey you can you have unlimited power now yeah yeah, it really makes you wonder, you know, like what we'll see in our lifetime, you know, it, like we're going to see it all. I think we're going to see it all. We're going to see a lot. That's for sure. Yeah. It, it's just Exponential. the question of, you know, like, does it just become like virtual or, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's oh, very, yeah, I'm I curious, think so. You know? I think that's where everything eventually goes. It's like, why build? you know, so much stuff if the AI supercomputer can already interface with your body and you can upload your body into the simulation and you're living yeah. good enough. Like why even deal with it kind of thing where the real earth is just going to get taken over by computers and look like the Borg basically. Right. Yeah. Cause I mean, there, we'll still be okay. like, like why would you even bother having a workplace if you could just log in and feel like you're at work with all yeah. your work people, you know what I mean? Like totally. And work on a, 14th century pirate ship and you're like you yeah. know it's like all these things like i'm really doing it we're freaking having to go raid these people and go get on this island and find treasure yeah. and stuff where it's like it keeps me busy it's pretty fun good lord it's just like such a, a mind fuck to sit around and think about man it is and that's the yeah. thing with the ai stuff it's all exponential like i still i remember i wish i could bring up the year or whatever but like seeing that first like white paper thing where they announced that like you could draw like a cat and it would turn into like a cat, like the first like AI generation that like mm -hmm. you could just scribble this and it would look like a real thing. And that was only like two years ago or something. And now yeah. it's already just moving on so fast. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be very interesting over the next couple of years with. Um, with with things that we're not really expecting. I feel like right now it's like, it's like my space just came out and we're just getting yes. social media and That's everybody's perfect. like, this is sick, man. I found all my friends from high school or Facebook. You know what I mean? And they're yeah. like, everybody's yeah. amped. And then 10 years later, they're like, man, our kids are committing suicide and we don't yeah. understand why. <laughs> <laughs> totally. think, like, like, man, the, somebody shared something in our Slack group the other day where it was um, an AI thing like basically process Kurt Cobain and then they had Kurt Cobain singing some other song, right? Yes. Yes. And, there, uh, and, there's a YouTube channel like, called there. I ruined it. And he does, or she does all kinds of really pretty crazy mashups. Right. So then it's like, like, like how long does it take until somebody's like, Hey, I'm going to do a duet with Elvis. And then all of a sudden somebody else yeah. is like, wait a minute, I'm getting paid. Elvis is like, that's our family. You know what I mean? And like, yes, yes. Or, the royalties or it's going to be like and... political stuff or it's yep. going to be like, totally. your wife could call you and be like, Hey, um, yeah, can you tell me real quick, because I just need to do this thing. And then yep. boom, now they got your, so, your like, yep. identity. like, 
It's a oh, huge, yeah, and me, like good. I have thousands of hours of my voice, not thousands, but I have right. a lot of hours of my voice out there. So I'm like perfect yeah. candidate for all that stuff of like, just like me talking to the camera kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, there's enough that somebody could deep fake you for sure. For sure. <laughs> you know? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. But there's yeah. enough that I could live on for a long time forever if I died tomorrow too. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, man. What a world. It's just, you know somebody that was born in in let's just say 1900 right and there's like yeah. horses and buggies and no cars and uh i don't know electricity was kind of like right there yeah the that's like 1910 1920 right. something like that so electricity was early early right. 1900s so, too so let's just say they lived 100 years they made it to 2000 and they're like seeing airplanes the internet, computers and stuff like that like cars yeah just a huge huge like huge. you know smartphones and and you know like mm -hmm. i guess that's not quite 2000 but not like, quite yeah computers but, the internet like, man, just insane amount of things like they went from 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 riding a horse to like seeing a man on the moon you, you yeah. know what i mean and, and then definitely some, you know so yeah it's my like great grandfather we, my great grandfather not born in 1905 like first generation italian died in 2000 so he saw he saw it all for sure lived yeah. through the great depression all that stuff so it's like where we 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 came in. It's like, man, what is the what's the top end of what we're gonna see? That's just really crazy to think about. Yeah, yeah, unimaginable. You know, yeah, and even like with bike stuff, you know, yeah, like does does AI and like what we're doing like turn into they run the the Google um, mountain bike through all the mountain bike trails, and then you put on your Apple headset or your Google yeah. headset and you get on a trainer and you rode Peru except for you're in your garage. Yeah, you know? definitely. Definitely that extrapolation of watching a video and then turning the video a little more 3D, a little more immersive, that's gotta be right around the corner. And yeah. uh, oh man, and the, yeah, the sights, the sounds, the smells. And I like having Everstoke, I love like that we have this big plot of land because the, the AR, VR stuff has gotta be like, pretty close to having some kind of virtual hunting game where you're like, you're walking around with your AR goggles and you got your like fake bow and arrow and you're like hunting deer and stuff. That would be so cool. Like out there in a, like a big freaking hunger games, uh, simulation. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's just like, um, I bet you it, it you'll end up with some like, like Westworld kind of deals wherever you like log in and you get to go like, rob banks and shoot people and stuff you know what I mean? yeah like, definitely feel like you're definitely. really there you know yeah the yeah the brain computer interface is uh yeah it's gonna be something hook me up to a some kind of thing well i guess eventually if you could just upload your brain you don't need your body and you're just in the computer which is probably the most uh like satanic mark of the beast kind of thing scenario that could possibly happen yeah yeah, and then you get into all those like weird like philosophical things like so are you actually dead if you're on yeah. there, you know or do you even exist yeah yeah weird weird yeah. shit man so the bike industry has been weird as <laughs> weird as hell lately too yeah and uh so you you used to be riding like sponsorship riding for ibis are you still riding their bikes or i still ride the bike like they gave me a, a free bike in october or something like that and it's an expensive bike the ibis hd6 and i'm happy happy to ride it i just really like the relationship we have and i think it's kind of probably should have way past time to like try to find something else but it's like it, the, the dollars and the cents and like trying to the sponsorship stuff is tough. It's much easier to do other sponsorship stuff like my element sponsorship, which is fantastic. And it's mm -hmm. like a, a perfect uh, thing versus I'll take a free bike every once in a while. Yeah. 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 Is, is it worth it? You know, is like yeah. what it really comes down to. Cause it does give you, you know, if you don't have that sponsorship, it gives you the freedom to ride whatever you want. So like your yep. full suspension could be X, your, e-bike could be y and your whatever your gravel bike could be z you know so yep, totally do you would would you feel like like that would be like a better scenario to you to not have to be sponsored by a bike sponsor or oh yeah definitely because there's there's enough like wiggle room where it's like i know 
like Ben from Deviate that made the like Ben Jones made the Deviate bike. And it's like, that's a, like a total up and coming thing that I would love to like, you know, hey, send me a bike, go hop on that, do it in the videos and that kind of thing. So yeah, having options is great, but it's so funny how little I care about the bikes too. It's like, this bike is awesome, but I'm not constantly like, well, I need this and I need that. And I like talking about trails is always like my favorite thing versus like, thinking about bikes and uh -huh. what do I need? What do I got? This will, this will last me quite a long time. Were you that way before YouTube or do you think you've just got like numb to it because you like don't really have to pay for them and stuff like that? No, I think I was always about the trails for sure. Like you have to have some level of bike nerding out cause you want to make sure that you have a good bike. Like right. that's at, at first you're always like, is it actually good? Like you look at MTBR and like people, well, it's poppy and it's this and it's that. And then you go to like demos and like outer bike and stuff to actually get on a bike and feel it. And then you realize it's all kind of the same kind of sorta. Like if there was actually something that was 10 times better, every racer would be racing on that and they would right. dominate every single thing. It's not like that. Bikes are pretty good. Yeah. Do you, do you see a day when trail one makes a frame? You know, <sighs> It's very possible, but on the same topic of like all the digital AI and all this stuff, like <laughs> it's just like really 10 years. I don't know. I don't think any of this is going to exist. So it's like it probably it, it, worst case scenario, all of this still exists, I would say. So it's like we could make a frame, but like, you know, like pumping, like getting breaking into that, you know, concept in the worst possible not the worst possible ever time but right now stuff's so low like i went on backcountry.com randomly and i was like looking at all these bikes that are on 40 percent discount and they're like last year's bikes or whatever and it's like wow there's some amazing deals on like really good bikes right now so things are yeah. lulling out yeah if you want to buy a brand new bike right now is probably the time to do it yeah for sure that's for sure but that's not going to last for forever. I mean, I, I feel like they're they're discounting that stuff so much. It's maybe yep. another year. You know what I over -ordered, mean? Over-ordered over -ordered a lot of stuff because of the pandemic and people like demand went through the roof and it's just like riding that wave. Yeah. But when we get our next big stimulus check from Joe, it's going to go right back up. There we go. That'll be it, right? That's funny. <laughs> so... Um, Somebody asked on online, and I thought it was actually a good question. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and butcher whatever they said. But they asked if when you got married or now that you're married, did it actually change your YouTube goals compared to like maybe what you thought they were originally? Hmm. It's been pretty good, pretty similar, I would say. It's just awesome. It's fantastic to like marry someone you love and like have this partner where it's like oh yeah youtube goes away tomorrow who cares <laughs> really like yeah. i have this like amazing person i can get through anything now so it's like a very nice foundation in life where it's like oh this maybe this youtube stuff matters less than that's all i had that's all i yeah. ever focused on for sure but mm -hmm. and then like just being married and like being going out on a trip and i'm like oh i'm leaving her behind i feel bad but it's like that's what i got to do that's the job that's the that's the whole thing go out for a week come back and stuff but she's awesome she you know we met not later in life but she was 20 something when we met so she's not like uh she lived a whole life you know she lived yeah independently and was an independent person kind of thing instead of just being like attached at the hip and we have to do everything together. So that's yeah, yeah. awesome. Awesome that she can go do her stuff. We, I can do mine and we can do stuff together as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's how my relationship is with my wife. And we definitely have a lot of things that we do separately, but I think that's good though. I think that's really good to yeah, like, I think so not too. have all of our time together. You know, it yeah. gives you things to talk about too. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, like, if they weren't there, then you could tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Um, where do you do you think there's a time when you're not doing YouTube anymore? Do you have that like in the? I in really the don't anymore? think so. I've thought about it, but I really think like even you know if the technological singularity doesn't swallow us up, if I'm uh, 80 years old, I think it would still be pretty funny to do a vi like one video a month or something and just like still go out for a ride and still talk about what's on my mind and like still have a couple thousand people be interested and comment and stuff like that. But yeah, it, it would be, I, 
I really have come around to the concept of like never retiring and like always working and like because you want to just have something to do. You want it like I like yeah. loafing and doing nothing with the best of them for sure. But very quickly you start to go crazy and you start to like, you know, you need something to do. You need a goal. You need an objective. Like right now I've been yeah. working in the garden a bit in the in the backyard, doing Everstoke stuff, all that stuff where it just keeps me busy, keeps me going. But I think as long as YouTube's around, it just would be great to upload a video every once in a while, even if it's not once a week, like, yeah, when I'm, when I'm an older gent. Yeah. Yeah. I think that a lot of people that, um, do YouTube are also like, I, I think you have to be a certain level of motivated person to do that. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So, cause when you were explaining like the never retire, like that's the same thing to me. It's, I don't like, I don't, there's very rarely that I'm actually just sitting around doing nothing, you, yeah. you know, like for the most part, it's like, I'm always doing something or, or it's like, and it's just because that's the type of, of mind that I have. I'm like, Oh, yeah. I'm going to learn how to do this 3d printing, or I'm trying to figure yeah. out how to like build this thing, or I'm like learning some other crap that I probably don't need to figure out, but you yeah. know what I mean? it's just like, no, it's great. It is that kind of mindset for sure of just like tinkering and building and challenging. Yeah. I, I know a lot of, of of creators. You know, they'll they'll be successful in a certain channel or or a certain niche, and then maybe like get tired of that niche. Do you think that there's a potential that you could do some kind of YouTube stuff that's not mountain biking? I think it's possible. I think like the Everstoke stuff. I was kind of like dipping my toe and seeing like, hey, people actually like this, and is there enough of a story here and stuff? Where it's like didn't quite hit as hard as I would have hoped kind of thing. But yeah, I think there's, it's totally possible, but doing the mountain biking stuff is just fantastic. I love it so much. It like brings me so much joy uh, mm -hmm. to go out and do the film, the trails and do the rides and be like, wow, this is great. I get to do this versus like slaving away, building a, like a house, like well house or something. <laughs> it's like not quite as uh, it is very uh, uh, satisfying at the end, but I don't know if the juice is worth the squeeze as much as the mountain bike rides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're super well established in in the the niche that you're in already. Yeah. So that's kind of hard to let go of as well. But There's been a lot nice. of YouTubers in in different like genres though lately, like just quitting. So yeah, you for know, sure. But it, um, it does it does make me feel good. Like when I do some other random, like I talk about the van and that video does well, or like when I talked about Paul the Puncher quitting YouTube and that was just like me talking opinion piece and that did well so it's like mm -hmm. i know if i have something that people actually care about it, it can do well so it's just mm -hmm. it's kind of that same formula what do people want to see what are they excited about what's interesting what makes them feel something like yeah. if you can do that you'll get people to watch it yeah how many subscribers do you have nowadays um five hundred twenty thousand something it's kind of it's been stagnant for quite a while yeah What's the uh, what's the average video kind of like getting as far as views? You go? know, it's pretty up and down. Like it's funny where I'll be like, "Oh man, that one did terrible," and then a couple weeks later, it's like forty five thousand. I'm like, "Oh okay," because at the at the first couple days, you're always like, "Uh oh, eh eh," but yeah, I think forty five fifty is like after a month or so. I look back, I'm like, "Oh," and then you know, random ones that do like seventeen thousand, you're like, "What the hell? What's yeah, going yeah. on?" And then random ones that do a hundred thousand, you're like, "Oh cool, yeah. good people like that." Yeah, it's interesting, like, like uh, as you're starting YouTube and you're you're kind of like going along, the the amount of people that subscribe versus the amount of people <laughs> that watch, like like that percentage starts at almost a hundred percent or starts at a hundred percent. You know, yeah. and it just goes down and goes down and goes down. And in your mind though, like as that person who's going through that process, you think Oh, the more subscribers I get, I'm definitely going to like keep like percentage wise going up. <laughs> totally. You know? Totally. And um, it's really strange how that works out. Cause I mean, it's like Seth, for example. I mean, he has what, 3 million subscribers. Yeah. But it's not, it's not like every video he does gets a million views. And no, that would be like no. a third of his. Like totally. you would think, like it would be pretty easy to say, oh, yeah, definitely a third of my subscribers are watching. Yes, that. exactly. You know? 
Yeah, and I think probably 2008 YouTube, that was the, you know, that was the whole thing, the feed and like, boom, that's these people come and they go and they unsubscribe because they don't want to see it anymore. Now, if they don't want to see it anymore, they don't need to unsubscribe because YouTube knows what you're watching. You're watching videos about Bitcoin. You're not watching mountain bike videos. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like the subscribe button really doesn't mean anything. Anymore. No, it really is like just like this tiny little thing. And it's the funniest thing because whenever you meet anyone, that's the first thing they ask. That's the first thing anyone's obsessed about. And it's the yeah. least, least valuable thing in the world. Like it's, are you entertaining people? Are the videos getting views? Are they watching it? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, and it, and it I mean, for me, I'm not as many subscribers as you. So it's still like, it motivates me to see that number grow. But even yes. though I, in the midst of this conversation, completely know that it means nothing. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a milestone. But it's cool. Like if you don't have milestones in life, it's kind of, you are kind of treading yeah. water. Like, so it's that, that North star. Yeah. I wonder if YouTube changes their like plaque situation to like how many views your channel got yeah or, watch you know hours I mean? yeah yeah that would be funny and it's actually it, I mean, funny that they haven't innovated that because they know that the subscriber thing means nothing and it doesn't like a thing so like yeah come come up with something new yeah and it's interesting though because like those number stats are so different too when you look at shorts compared to ow i just smashed my finger that hurt um, <laughs> when you look at shorts compared to like long form, you know, like some, like somebody like Joe can drop a, a short that gets, you know, two, 3 million views yeah. pretty regularly, you know, like not like, definitely. like every week, but you, you know what I mean? It's like, that's oh, yeah, not it's normal yep. but to do a, a long form video that gets 3 million views. That's like very extraordinary. Abnormal. Yeah. Like yeah. I've got yeah. two, I've got two videos out of my 600 maybe that have done more than 3 million. Yeah. That's crazy. What, what's that? What's the video? Portal is definitely, and then maybe the uh, Snowden, like what are we getting into? Snowden, like where I'm on the mountain, like kind of the orange bike and it's green and I'm in Wales oh. or whatever. Yeah. Right on. I think those are the two biggest ones. Over, but over a million, huh? I think so. Yeah, yeah. At least. That's crazy. Right on, man. That's super exciting. What gets you excited about your channel? I mean, at this point, you've been doing it for a long yeah. time. Yeah. So. That's a good question. I think it's real. I'm more excited about Everstoke and the possibility of like creating a real thing that people can come to and see and, and do and feel and like that you've created something tangible in the world, like which uh -huh. is pretty cool too. Cause you know, getting people to say hi and getting views and stuff is awesome and it pays the bills and stuff. But like having like, building Everstoke and people being like, man, that was cool. That this is great. Like kind of thing. That's a, a very motivating thing. Yeah. Is that your, your focus this year is like going to be a lot of, a lot of Everstoke content for sure. For sure. And then I'll probably get pulled away and I'll probably go kind of like I've, I've been doing, I go out on a little trip and get a bunch of ride videos because you know, I could spend two months at Everstoke and not get a single video out of it. That's really that great. You know, like stuff that I love, like I'll make videos about it on Patreon maybe. And like, but like, Oh, I did this. I changed that. Like it's fascinating to me. And some people do find it fascinating, but I think, uh, figuring out a way to tell the story a little more compact and longer term and that kind of stuff and doing a bunch of stuff and then doing an Everstoke video is kind of the way to go. Yeah, yeah. What's your release schedule nowadays? What are you, how many videos are you doing? I try to do once a week, but really I like having advertisers and having like element sponsorship. Like if there's not a sponsor, I could just hold the video for the next week. It's the difference between, you know, the video making 400 bucks and making 2000 bucks. That's very much uh, well worth it of like, eh, should I release it now if it's going to make kind of nothing? And then, oh, I can get sponsored post and actually make it worth my while. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like um, what you just said right there is like hypocritical to the old Joey Trek days? <laughs> I, I think about that a lot for sure. Everyone had the opportunity to join Patreon. That was the thing. I've, I've shoved the Patreon down everyone's throat mm -hmm. enough and that was the whole thing. I would never have needed to do anything if people joined Patreon and that we could just ride off into the sunset in our own little bubble. But yeah. that, you know, it, it had a good wave and now it's kind of, you know, coming down. So yeah. I still got to pay the bills. Yeah, yeah. No, I really I mean, wish, I really wish like, 
you know, when you think about it with your family and everything, I should have done sponsors from the start. I should have done it all from the start and I would have had a lot more uh, like to support my family for the next 20 years if I would have done it that whole way through. And uh, yeah. I get people asking me that question and it's like, what? So yeah, you asked me that question. Somebody on the street says Joey Trek. Was that worth it? The the millions yeah. dollars that I left on the table, basically. <laughs> like, who cares? I'll take it all all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't mean that like in any any way to be like negative. I was just no, yeah. I didn't take it. But like, I did put it out there that way, right? Like, where yeah. on on myself, I'm like, we could do this. We don't need the sponsors. We yeah. could do it. And like, we did it for a, we did do good. Like, the Patreon was like rocking and rolling for quite a while. But like, yeah, when. If you can yeah. flick a switch at your job to make 10 times more money, you're going to yeah. do it. And this guy didn't do it. So you should. Yeah. I mean, I, I, um, I've tried a lot of different things with Patreon where, um, it's very, uh, it's very interesting, you know, like what you end up with there. And like, I, I, I at one point I bought a bunch, I had a bunch of things made like, yeah. Like, like cups like this and and headbands and like all like like actual like products you know and it would be like hey if you join this tier you get this and it's probably like if you were to go buy all those things like a hundred dollars worth of stuff yeah be like on the like twenty dollar tier you know and um i think i got like two people out of the like I don't know. It was probably two thousand dollars worth of shit that I bought. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, and it was like, wow, that didn't work at all. That you was know? not the yeah the the carrot and the stick. Yeah, and 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 I what I've noticed with Patreon as well, and maybe it's the same with you, but like, even whenever I put content on there that's not available to any like YouTube at all, it's like, and it's not just like a a, a, a rough cut, you know, like mm -hmm. it's a video that's specifically for Patreon there's probably like 5% of the people on Patreon that actually watch it. Yeah, it is. And then it you're is like, a, wow, man. Like, yeah. You guys it's are a weird, for this and you don't even care. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is a weird thing because if you think about you like the way you consume content, like most people I think would admit they're just like, oh, I just want to support you. I don't really care yeah. about the perks or whatever. I don't want to, I don't care about early cuts or extended cuts, but I really like that like kind of offer that I'm offering you something here for three yeah. bucks a month. They're getting this thing instead of the weird bizarro, like, oh, for 50, we do this. And, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, it is, it's funny of like people's habits and how do you get people excited about stuff? And that's the whole key, right? That, yeah. Like the, yeah. you look at the numbers and you're like, whoa, okay. This is uh strange that, they're still here. They still love it, but uh, yeah, they're so, not u using it. Yeah. So for those reasons, I ended up starting the members, the YouTube members. Yeah. And it's kind of like a test for me, like right now. Yeah. So I still have Patreon and I changed Patreon to basically just like one tier. It's like my yeah. $5 tier. It has perks that aren't part of like the members, like the YouTube members mm -hmm. stuff. But the YouTube members is basically like, hey, you're just supporting me. And then you get, you know, whatever the YouTube members shit gives you, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. You get to have the like a the little badge next to your name or like and I think those things are cool. And then I do it's too. Like something that actually like I don't know how else to say. Like gives you a little street cred on YouTube, you know, when you're exactly. on the, your favorite person's channel or whatever. Totally. But I'm curious to see like how it plays out. I, I was talking yeah. to um somebody else recently. I think it was uh Hartel Party. And he was saying like, well, the percentages that they take from members is so much higher that yeah. even if he had all the same people from Patreon there, that he wouldn't be like able to make 30%, money, you know? Yeah. And the movement, that friction, like, you know, Seth moving from Patreon to Substack, like that, there's a lot of friction there. You lose a lot of people along the way. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's such a sad thing too, because you want people to be excited about something. You don't want to be like blood yeah. from a stone of like, okay, I've still got the Patreon going, but I don't want to tell anybody like right. kind of thing. So yeah, there's got, it's, yeah, what's the next step, right? Like, what's the next thing? And like live events, people love the live event type stuff. And I, I'm really hoping I can do a few uh, group rides, like Patreon group rides up at Everstoke because it's built yeah. for that. Like the small loops and stuff, like yeah. come out, hang out, let's barbecue, do a few loops. We all hang out and, you know, get, yeah, to, it's get perfect to spend for that. some time. Yeah. The, um, yeah, yeah. What do you think about Seth and, and the Substack thing? It's it's so funny. It's so cool. Like you go to Substack. I'm sure you went. I think yeah. I saw that yeah, you were on there too. 
it's yeah. such a uh, Facebook versus MySpace experience. Like it's beautiful. Like it's such a good clickable thing. Like everything just looks nice. It's all like, I, I love it. Patreon is it Patreon's so okay. janky. Yeah. Patreon yeah. sucks. Like it's MySpace yeah. for sure. Like it's just, there's such clunkage. And then YouTube's yeah. way worse than even Patreon, which is crazy that YouTube still hasn't figured out comments and gifts and reactions yeah. and all the stuff that like Facebook does really well that I don't right. spend much time on Facebook, but comments and stuff on Facebook have been like amazing forever yeah. where you could actually like get a link to a specific comment if you wanted to send it to your buddy or it's like, yeah. oh, it's crazy yeah. that like, we're still so far behind with this like engagement thing where, but yeah, yeah. like Substack's just neat. I think it's a great, cool idea. And like, especially Seth is like paying someone to be like an editorial, you know, person. Like he's got a, yeah. a magazine writer on his staff to do it. So it's like a very cool way to do it. And he's paying, like, if you want to write an article for him, he'll pay a creator you know, some money to write an article on his Substack. So it's it's really a good different kind of angle. And uh, I like it. It's just, is that the next step? What gets people excited? Are people looking for more articles? But that's the thing, his video about like the Virginia Tech helmet thing. I don't know if you happen to see that one. That was an awesome, that. awesome yeah. video. Like just, you get, you learn, you see, like he, he took the time to do it. And then he ha like has the article. So it's a little more search indexed maybe, but I think everything on YouTube is so search indexed that it comes to it. But like, that was just like amazing, like journalism quality work. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, when I first saw it, I was like, you know, first of all, yeah, bold move, you know? Yeah. And then, then second, I'm like, this is really cool. Like I really do like the format and I like the, uh, definitely feels like more interactive than than the yeah. way the Patreon was looks but clean as, as a creator my first like thought was like man this looks like a lot more work than than Patreon starting from scratch yeah you well not only that, that but it's like up. so much of it is based around like actually creating like like written content as Text, well yeah you know? yeah for sure and then that's the part where I really started questioning whether or not like man especially with the younger generation right now like yeah is it just us old people they're like yeah reading shit is cool you yeah <laughs> totally like i know and that's why i just wish youtube memberships would have taken off quicker they always had that youtube's always been slow i remember when youtube wasn't like 16 by 9 wasn't hd you know it's uh -huh. like youtube is oh like vimeo was like oh it's hd and it's 16 by 9 like youtube's always been slower because it's such a behemoth but it's like that friction, that friction is so key. Like, so just hitting join with the memberships and it's showing maybe that, oh, you're, you can unlock the longer version of this video itself would be so cool. There's so many little like force multiplier tweaks that would be really nice. Yeah. Like if you could link your rough cut to your actual like final yeah, cut. So exactly. when people are watching it, they'd be like, oh, yeah. you want to see this like 45 minute version of this? You totally. know? And yeah, totally. there's definitely a lot of ways that that stuff could um, be better. I've seen, have you seen on shorts that you could do a short and it links to the full video, which is pretty neat. Yeah, I've seen something like that. Yeah. I was wondering if you could link, I, I haven't tried it. I, I just thought about the other day where if you put um, one of your members only videos in the end screen of your video, what so you could happen? say like, yeah. hey, if you want to check this out, and then they Numbers would actually only, click yeah. it and then they would say, hey, if you, be, join, you know, like. Yeah, like a modal or something, like something that pops up that says, hey, you have to join to see this. Yeah, I'm curious about that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, it's interesting that um, YouTube isn't more, um, it seems like they, they leave the door open for a lot of other companies yeah. to come up and, and, and do things. And it's like, is that by design or is it like, I, you know, like they, yeah, they should have seen Patreon and immediately drop memberships. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, or like bought them and turned it into its own thing. Yeah, or like, do they not see the value? Yeah, because it Patreon definitely came before memberships. And yeah, just yeah, kinda, by a long shot too. And they were know? more copying Twitch, I think, was their mindset. They weren't even like Patreon. I don't even know what's on the radar, but Twitch had the memberships and the emojis and the live streaming stuff, which is yeah. kind of what the memberships thing is. Yeah, and I guess they did. They did do the 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 live streaming thing there, like probably not too long after, like Twitch was like really blowing up because of that. Yeah. 
you know, we were talking about things changing a lot over time and that was one of them, you know, like remember when the live streaming first like hit YouTube, Yeah, dude, that was huge, man. Everybody was doing it. And I mean, that's really the reason that I ended up starting this podcast was that stuff. And yeah, it's definitely not the, um, the crowd that you used to see. Yeah. I don't know. I, how do your, how are, how are your live streams? They still like, I haven't pretty... done one in so long. I like, yeah. I, I don't know if I could even put one together kind of thing. I think I could, I actually got out like this, uh, to, to make this nice. I took out my little, uh, ATEM mini and everything. And yeah. the live streams are always like nerve wracking, but then you do it and it's like, wow, that was so good. Like an hour of fun and people interacting and going back and forth and just like catching that like lightning in a bottle, which has always been pretty amazing and like but then there's sometimes where you're just juggling by yourself and you're like oh man this is I, can i even keep this up yeah 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 it's interesting how do you uh how do you like that thing that little mini oh it's great i actually think i figured something out just now that like i didn't have the the microphone on <laughs> anytime previously like i was trying to like separately do it but it's it's fantastic because i can go into like a google meet with this thing but i kind of need like a screen behind it so i'm not like looking down like if i want to look at you i have to look down here so i need like a teleprompter type thing in front of me so i could like actually look at the camera and and do it but it's it's so a nice piece of kit is, um like a it's a it's a regular like uh totally slr type thing just yeah, on a tripod real, this is like what i've filmed my ads on and my like outros on yeah yeah i have a, a stream deck which is similar to, to what you're yeah. using there but I'm using a webcam, just like a, a Brio. And then yeah. I, I mean, you've been in my garage, so this is like yep. a TV in front of me. Yes. So I can, I, I ended up Command making a, a, we'll call it a tripod, like a, a, <laughs> a camera stand that puts the camera pretty close to like where your video is. Yes, because yes. For a long time, I would always be like not looking yes. at the camera. Yeah, it's very awkward. That perfect line of sight yeah. where you're not like cross-eyed and looking around. Yeah. But yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's funny how these things change. It's just like, I, I, yeah. I, I wonder, you know, where, where it all goes. You know? Yeah. I like the live streaming of rides. Like I've loved that idea. I've done it. I've failed almost every time I've done it, but like that thing that, Hey, it's happening right now is just yeah. a very cool feeling. And it's like, you do it. And then when you're done, you're done. And, but it's about like, can you get people like be like, wow, oh, wow, this is really cool. And uh, yeah, I'd yeah, I think love that. What do, you, what do you think about the possibility of like, like, like uh, recording in VR kind of like mode that I like that idea. Like I've often had the idea of like doing two GoPros right next to each other because then you could do stereoscopic recording. But the GoPro does so much with the like anti shake that you wouldn't mm. be able to match them up perfectly. I don't think I think it yeah. would just like if you tried to like make it so it's a stereoscopic image, it just wouldn't work. So then you have to do unstabilized. So you wear the chin mount and you try to keep your head as stable as possible. But man, I think that like the first time you see, like the first time any of us are gonna see like a trail with like that real depth and something that's really steep, like in VR, that's gonna be a magical moment, I think. And yeah. like really watch like Red Bull Rampage or something. That's gotta be like coming. It's, it's somehow stitched with like multiple 360 cameras. Yeah, that, something like that. And so so that you can put on the goggles and just look yeah. around and actually see the ground below yeah. you. Yeah. That, that'll be But a, so far, the fidelity just hasn't been there. Like, yeah, you would really need like a freaking circle of GoPros because you know, let's face it, Insys 360 and whatever, all these other knockoffs, like they still aren't there. Like every, they get, they get close and then the GoPro just blows it away and they get close and it, like the yeah. GoPro just blows it away. So it's like, ugh, I, I wish that shit would be so much better. It's just like, come on. Yeah. I will say that even though I love the stabilization on the new GoPros, it feels like it took them forever to get the fucking audio right for one yeah. thing. And then yeah. the other thing is I do miss the um I do miss using the gimbal just for the pure fact of like when you got off your bike it was already like the horizon was right. Yes. So yes. like so many times I'll get off I'll be talking and I forget to like push my camera down up your nose, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's like oh crap, man. No, I, I know. Got, I didn't catch that or And or the, turned, the mechanical you know, gimbal like, in low light. Low light 
was like the magic, you know? Like there's just no such thing as low light now. So if you're in a darker area, I'm always like freaking out like, oh, it's gonna be terrible. It's like stabilization is yeah. gonna be t awful. But like, you know, back then it could just like go to low frame rate and it actually looks more magical with low light. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like, man, should we go back? Like I got these I know. fours over here. I, I, I put them up the other day because I actually threw the the fours and the gimbals on on like Facebook Marketplace. I was like, I wonder if anybody will buy these. Yeah. And uh, they sat there for like a month and I was like, oh, yeah, there's your answer. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, I know. So I was like, yeah, I'll put them in the background. But it was kind of a little, um, I'm drawing a blank on the word. The right museum. Now. You're, yeah. Like it's a just like show piece. Made me reminisce like those old, old days of, of that. Yeah, those, but, for sure. The yeah. trade-offs. I, I really like, I, I'll go back to like one of my old videos. I'm like, how did anybody watch this? This is crazy. And then, you know, I go back to a newer video and it's like, man, there is some good like bike body action. Everything's exposed. Yeah. It's not shaking. Like it is pretty magical. 4k looks good, but I always wish it would be better. Yeah. There's some stuff, you know, that, um, that at the time I just remember was like so dialed. And then you go back, like, like for instance, you remember trail peaks video in Auburn where he's just like smashing that pink bronze and he's like, just railing all the, the there's a couple. Yeah. Like stuff. third divide. There's one they did like third divide where it was like warp speed after a yeah. rain. Like they, they climbed up it, I think because there was still snow at the top and it's just like, you really got that feeling like, Holy crap. They are flying. But when I watch it now, like the quality is not, we're so used yeah. to the quality of today. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. At the time that, that video was like sick. Yeah. And now yeah, I'm like, but we have our memory of it. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't go back. Yeah. Yeah. Do you watch any of your old videos ever? Not too often. Like if, if it comes on, like if I am trying to remember something, but like when I do, I am usually impressed. Like I have to yeah. say, like I'm I, like, wow, this is like it's holding my interest. It's not complete garbage. Like I'm I don't like like the how zoomed in kind of the first, you know, hundred videos are or however many I did where it was like a little bit too not enough wide angle. Like that uh -huh. annoys me. But like I'm pretty happy with like the flow and the talking and like i'm like the same person i ever was like right from the yeah. start like that i could actually talk on camera and like talk to the camera talking yeah. on camera is a little different that took me a little longer but like taught that i could like do all these goofy things i think like my first video i said like pain and pleasure and like just all these goofy things that i'm like man how i just had it i was you know i'm freaking 34 years old so i lived my life but like it's still pretty amazing that uh, like it popped out as it did yeah yeah do you do you um is there any particular video in in particular that like if you were going to go watch one of your old ones that's the one that you'd like oh, to watch that's a oh man that's a great question i i think like the the butt puckering boardwalks of fort bill like that's like the fort william one it's so funny because like that's like the the weird crazy boardwalk and that one got like has probably more than a million views but it got demonetized because i say the f word a million times and it's it's so funny how much i'm cussing throughout the whole thing i'm like oh man it's that like somebody reported it and it actually got flagged but that was a great day with andrew mctrail rider going to scotland and uh, -huh. uh riding those i want to ride those trails again so bad they're scary as heck yeah the it, it's funny. Did you make a, a conscious effort to like stop cussing as much? Yeah. Once my niece was born. So like 2019 February when she was born, I was like, okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to definitely try to stop cussing and like in the videos and in real life. I, when I'm hanging out with my brother and stuff and like, even I, I did a couple here tonight for sure. Like it still slips out, but way, way less, way less like than yeah. I ever did for sure. I'm uh, definitely cussed like a sailor before. Yeah, that was one of those things that Seth always preaches about, like, don't cuss in your videos, you know, like. He did. There's definitely his first few videos. Are, are oh, cussing. yeah. Even whenever he yeah. did that mashup of uh, the the trip to the Keys with him and Alex. Yeah. Just in that video alone, it was, and it, it wasn't even always like cussing, but it was like the way that he talked then. Yeah. Now, you're like, man, even then, which I thought his ch channel was pretty clean. You know, yeah, like, totally. You know, yeah. Yeah. I've definitely made a, a conscious effort to, to not do as much. I, I still let them here and there because I feel like it's part of like who I am. Yeah. It's life. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
I, I got but, so many comments and emails from people like, you just, you sound so stupid, like nice comments and emails yeah. and people like, I'm like, that's who I am. It really is yeah. who I, who I was. And I think when kids get involved, it's like, man, you just don't want the kids to be talking like that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's such a catch 22. I mean, I've gotten so many of those as well, especially over yeah. the years, you know? And, um, yeah. the funny thing is like, for me personally, like I always raised my kids that they knew that that's just not appropriate for children to say you know so to me it was like yeah i'm gonna cuss around my kids still and they're just gonna know the difference you they know have to and, deal with it yeah yeah because it's not like they're not gonna go out on the street and all of a sudden somebody's drop drop the f-bomb and they're gonna be like i don't know what to do you know yeah like, yeah guess i can just say fuck, you know yep. so, but uh um yeah i think that overall though for for the the sake of the content that um a lot of the times that I'm using that word as an adjective or whatever, yeah. it, like it, it, it's not really adding anything. So yeah, I've noticed myself whenever I'll say things in a video, like when I'm talking to the camera while I'm riding, and then I'll be like, "Oh, say that sentence again," you know? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny yeah. though, because you you imagine those people that sent those comments or sent those emails, they might be rotten to the core. They might be like yeah. scamming their work and you know right. getting embezzling stuff, and they're putting on a show versus like, what's your true self? What is what's your true heart? What do you do like when nobody's watching? Kind of thing. Right. Right. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. You never know. And plus, the internet is such a fickle place. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it's very interesting that's for sure you do you um do you feel like your your um skin has gotten thicker with how you read comments compared to when you started or have you already always been pretty good at like being able to wipe those things off that's a good question for sure because i i think still like you know when it's true when it really gets you it's like oh that was real that's was what i was worried about but like it's funny you can almost tell like when new people come to the channel like there was a guy that commented yesterday or something like oh this guy just laughs and like you know he's just laughing all the time and it's like and then he's watching like three different videos and leaving like nasty comments like oh yeah banned i've banned like you know thousands of people from my channel so it's like they comment but you, they never know that they're banned so it's like it all uh, works oh, out yeah. <laughs> oh that's funny <laughs> yeah people um I, I a lot of times i've noticed with people i think sometimes they actually don't realize that they're being an asshole as well you know totally totally it's like uh there's like a camaraderie thing like of like breaking balls and like stuff just comes over terribly in text like there's definitely a couple guys that like they've been commenting since the very beginning and they'll still like kind of throw out little like digs and little like just a yeah. little too sharp of like yeah just round this off a little bit i like recognize your your name and your avatar yeah. for like the past eight years right <laughs> yeah 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 it's um i don't know i i i've definitely like noticed that with with some people where i've i've said because i don't usually like i don't like like banter like i don't argue with people but yeah. i'll like i'll i'll call things out here and there yeah. you know what I mean? where it's just like well <laughs> you know whatever and uh because usually whenever people are being like kind of ignorant if you give them anything it doesn't matter what it is it's yeah just for sure yeah so most of the time it's just like you know like the kind of like kill them with kindness kind of thing where it's like sweet i'm i'm stoked you like that you know or whatever <laughs> but it's like uh um sometimes you're like i can't bite my tongue on this one yeah uh, yep but 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 in some of those those times though is whenever like the the people maybe from what my response is they realize that they're coming across wrong and then they're like oh i'm sorry i didn't mean it that way or yes uh, they're normal people it's yeah. funny because like i've met so many people now like through the channel and like you'll meet a guy in person and you're like this is who this guy is that's given me all <laughs> kinds of advice and all this like uh, like the just okay now I'll, I'll take everything with a grain of salt for the end of time it's like <laughs> oh you should try that do this like what? You can't even tie your shoes. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh man. Yeah. It's definitely, um, it's, it, it's interesting. I think the other thing that's really, uh, one of those things that 
I never put any perspective in before I started. I'm sure this is the same for you is, is how much people know you when they meet you compared to how much yeah. you know them, you know? And, uh, and it, and it's really odd because it's like, I don't know you at all, but you know, yeah. like how many kids I have, like yeah. what I've done for the last eight years or whatever. It's yeah. like, it's just totally, I, I find that okay. Like I'm okay with that. I like know that I've put it out there. There's yeah. things that I've said. Like I, I feel pretty good. Like people bring that up a lot. Like, Oh man, you know so much about me. Like, eh, we'll hang out. I'll have a conversation. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't, but yeah, it is interesting. Like the, the one sidedness is, is definitely just, bizarre obviously yeah it's not that it, it, it like bothers me in any way but i it, it's always weird the way that the conversation like uh goes. yes you know what i mean because sometimes people will like inadvertently it's not like they're doing it on purpose but they 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 kind of forget that they're actually just meeting you as a new person yes yes you, you know yeah. what i mean how'd the boy so do in boot camp like yeah yeah <laughs> just like, like like uh like you've actually been friends for the last five yes. years you're like Dude, totally I don't even know what can you yeah. tell me what your youtube name is maybe i'll remember yeah. you, then. you know yeah. like, like wear a picture of your avatar on yeah your shirt. exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 what do you um? What are you looking forward to this year at Everstoke? What do you, what is, what has got you like stoked for about that? Getting the bathrooms done for sure, and then like like I was saying, like fixing some trails, like dialing in. We like everything's like a B plus to get it to like A plus would be just fantastic because there's nothing better than riding a trail that's great, right? Like that's what all of this is about is for your, somebody to go down Everflow or Kill Zone or Let It Rip or uh, Rough Cut and be like, oh man, that was wild and just be like wired. And we're so far, like Aaron's like friggin' killed it on so many things and like Adventure Perimeter, like the newest one, like, oh, so good. Like once it gets ridden in some more, so like just like making little tiny tweaks and like being awesome. It'd be cool too to like do that. I'm gonna try to do the Everstoke Enduro and like make some cut like uh, cheat lines where I like cut the trail and uh, beat everybody. There you go, a little, little some travel lines. Easter light. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What um, is is Aaron planning on stopping with new trails and actually just working on the? Like, yeah, I think here? I think it is the refinement now. Like even though there's always like, ooh, there could be one here, there could be one there, but I think. Uh, big project is like there's this crazy uh, switchback on the adventure perimeter that's like going to be a wood thing. So I think that's one of his major ones. And then, yeah, it's like tuning, getting connecting little stuff. I think he wants to make one more trail behind Soulshine Point for the Enduro to kind of like keep everything to have a, another stage in the Enduro race. So mm -hmm. he's got tons of tons of ideas and it's yeah. going to be very cool. Yeah, definitely the the Everflow Trail. Um at least last year was the the crown jewel the highlight I, yeah for sure yeah i think the kill zone's pretty fun i mean i i'm a little biased because i helped build some of it but yeah, yeah 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 but uh um but overall i think that everflow trail that was the first trail that i rode there that i was like aaron you've actually like you did a hell of a job on this and and totally and like you said there's some refinements definitely yeah. but i mean there's always refinements i mean the yep trail that i built with aaron several years ago we're still making changes yes that. exactly it's never it never ends but to make it yeah. a little bit better it's awesome yeah yeah no that one's definitely super fun and i think i haven't ridden the new climb trail on the way up but oh uh, yeah i think if there's an easier way to get to the top of that everflow then that that'll definitely yeah. be a, a game changer yeah as well. the climb trail is great yeah there's a couple little uh tough punchy switchbacks but it's it's very nice it's a great survey of the whole the whole area the new the new climb yeah 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 i, I wasn't sure like 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 it's hard sometimes maybe maybe uh maybe once you have now that you have stuff on trail forks is everything on trail forks now yeah, I think so. I think maybe I missed one little piece, but yeah, like we our, our generic names and stuff, we're still uh, dialing that in. And I want to get signs and everything, but yeah, it's endless projects. Yeah, yeah. No, I think what I was getting at though is like with the map that he uses in his videos, it's harder to like 
like spatially like understand yes. where things are sometimes different and colors maybe and we'll stuff. Get on trail forks maybe it'll be a little easier to definitely to like make sense of like oh okay that's where that goes or whatever yeah so. especially when you can click on it see the elevation see where it click or where it connects and stuff yeah for sure so you said you were doing that with Gaia. Why did you have to use Gaia? You couldn't just use like a like a Strava or a Garmin. Like you X could, or... but it's it's like you can start and stop easier with Gaia. Like you're just self-contained instead of like, okay, let me finish a ride on Strava, then it uploads to Strava. I can't edit anything in Strava. Like you could keep like I I mark little spots where I see like bear tracks, and there's uh -huh. just a million things you can do with like like just record this little part and then save it and then export it and then upload it to like, just gave me way more control in Gaia GPS yeah. to have it like private until I was ready to actually like kind of take it and put it on trail forks. And I still have to edit it from there, but yeah, it's a yeah. good little like sandbox. Yeah. You actually got me to buy that years ago and I still use it. Yeah. 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 Cool. Definitely. I mean, at the time there was nothing else that worked GPS wise, you yeah. know, offline. You know, mm -hmm. so that was still like, there's still some, um, how do I say it? Some, some yet to be sanctioned trails that I ride yeah. that, that I use Gaia to like, oh yeah. Yeah. Cool. You know, so. Totally. Yeah. So, um, any big trips this year that you, that you're already like, mm -hmm. like I nothing. Up or? Yeah. I've got some things in the works, but nothing like for sure yet, but I'm happy because I want to just like nail Everstoke. I just want to get in it because, you know, last year I was like, okay, Everstoke and then boom, do like six different international trips and stuff. So yeah. I definitely want to uh, batten down the hatches. So I'm going to Whistler for my first time this year. Oh, what, what cool. are, what's your advice to me? Oh man, that's a great, uh, for me personally, like two days in the bike park is plenty. Like maybe you can go to the bike park all day, every day, but like I got bored of it very much. Like. Yeah. top of the world and stuff but like two days is plenty but they've built more stuff and so like people that do like seven days just at the bike park is crazy but there's tons of other trails all around that are very cool and uh i'm trying to think of like like lord of the squirrels is very much like a banner ride that is definitely worth doing but it's a big ass climb <laughs> it's a yeah. massive climb and you're up there in the alpine really cool and you go down and stuff but What's like then there's uh, Lord of the Squirrels. That sounds fun. Yeah, it's I'm not neat... much of a park guy, and some of the people that I'm going with are. Yeah. So I, I would, I'm, I'm definitely taking any advice that you have that's out, like not. Yeah. Park I think the park is still good though. That's the thing. Like the trails, the technical trails, they're tough, they're steep, they're fast, but they're still really good. Like top of the world, most definitely. And then. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while for me. It's definitely been quite a while. I'd have to look at the map and like, oh, I should try this one. And there's like Dark Crystal. That's like one that was like built for the EWS. That's like kind of a pedal off to the side and mm -hmm. that comfortably numb trail. That's a bit much. It's very much XC. That was like one of the first uh, uh, videos on my channel that did pretty good. Comfortably yeah. numb. Yeah, I was I definitely like in my mind, top of the world was the first thing that came to my mind. And then yeah, after good. That, was, like I, I had no clue, you know, so we're going to exactly. do a little bit of a, a road trip on our way there. So we're, we're going to hit Bellingham probably. on our oh, way up. That's the way. And, that's uh, the way for sure. Yeah. 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 Some of the people are flying, but um, a couple of us opted for the longer trip. So cool. cool. I'm excited about that. Like the, the adventure part of it. Uh, yeah. To be honest. I've been to North Star a couple of times and every time I go to like ride park, it just is like, it's just not my kind of riding. No, it's, I, it, yeah, it can be very I, much like, yeah. I just like the adventure of mountain biking more than I like the idea of, of riding a lift, which is funny because like, as much as I bitch about climbing in my videos, people would assume <laughs> that I would just love yes. being in a park. You know, yeah. but I, I like bitching about climbing because I just like bitching about climbing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's part of the mountain biker ethos. Yeah, 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 totally. I definitely well, recommend I, if you're driving up to Whistler to hit up Spence Mountain. It's Spence like, Mountain. you know, 
Spence Mountain. It's on the border of Oregon. You have to go out of the way a little bit off the I-5. Like Ashland is a straight shot, but you kind of have to go uh -huh. east a little bit. That place is fantastic. I have two videos on it on the trail, and I did it on like the Trail One list as well. But Spence Mountain oh, okay. is definitely worth spending two days at. But if you only have one day, there's like the Techie side, which is the north side, and then there's like the Flowy side on the south side, and 100% definitely got to hit that. Spence Mountain, yeah. I think Spence. when I went to Ashland was the same time that you were probably re recording the Klamath stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I can't think of that guy's name. I, I've ridden with him before too. Uh, the Hoff. Yeah. Jared, and, uh, yeah. I, I'm. I actually. I really would like to get up there and, and ride that. That Klamath yeah. stuff looked really. Fun. Yeah, he'll show you. He'll show you for sure. Like he'll take you on, and he's a great rider too. Like Nighthawk is a really well built trail like it's just so cool where anything built within the past five years is kind of almost a guarantee that it's going to be good because the trail yeah. builders understand like how everything should work now yeah 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 he came down to this area for work or something like that and i rode like yeah auburn and rockville and stuff it let him borrow yeah. my bike and, and uh so yeah i'm, I'm definitely great. looking forward to that it's super fun to travel and ride you know it's like um I mean, obviously that's what you're doing, but, uh, I think I can't express, express that enough to people. I used yeah. to be that guy that rode Auburn, Rockville, Salmon Falls, like over yes. and over and over and over again. And just like going somewhere new, it's just something special about it. Oh, even for me, like the friction of like, yeah. I can go out any day and go take my bike on a plant, like literally like no limits. And I'm still like, ah, okay, there's this, there's that. And then I freaking went to Las Vegas a couple weeks ago and had an awesome time on like two trails I'd never ridden and been like, yeah. oh, it's still there. It's there. It's all out there. Like that's yeah. what I'm all about is trying to convince people to go ride something new. Yeah, 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 definitely. I, I saw um, Alex did some stuff in Vegas a few years back that I yeah. that looked really fun. Didn't you do um, uh, Tucson recently too? Yeah, exactly. I did one day in Tucson on that Mount Lemon, and then I was in Phoenix, kind of the, yeah. the greater Phoenix, like the Goat Camp, and then Hawes, which is yeah, like yeah. that newer place that's very hot, very cool. Yeah, the yeah. hot new thing. Right, yeah. Hawes is pretty cool. Um, they're definitely doing a lot there. I, I'm really interested in that uh, that Tucson area. I've seen some some other things over in that area. That did you like the Mount Lemon was really good. Oh yeah, that one's classic. Like I did that on the 50 state shred. It's like uh, Bug Springs to La Milagrosa, and it's it's a pretty epic ride. Like it's like a point to point 14 mile downhill. You know, yeah, where like a it's a lot of cool. The cacti, the rocks, like a lot of good scenery changes. Like a long, long good stuff. Tough stuff. And Tucson's not too far from Phoenix, so maybe next no, year it's whenever we go two to, hour to, you know, drive, we can drive or down there and do yeah. a day there or something. Yeah, that'd be fun. Right on, man. Well, here we are, two hours later awesome easy yeah yeah i always like to ask people what youtube channels they like to watch what are you watching i'm all about my boys stud pack <laughs> it's my favorite channel uh what they're building they a house they're building the dream house it's a a guy and his dad and uh brother-in-law and they're building the dream house right now and they're working on the garage and it's just all these things i'm learning watching them build a house from scratch and it's so interesting they're funny they're interesting but also the construction stuff I, I i nerd out on it quite a bit and like yeah i spent a lot of today like drawing out the bathrooms and like doing all these like you know kind of drafting like how many beams are we going to need what's the what's the angle on the bird's mouth of the rafters and all this stuff so those guys are just very entertaining and it's a story right it's like yeah you know the 50 state shred was a story because i started at zero and i tried to get to 50. i only made it to 49 but you know like it's this story of the like this guy and his dad building this house and they're only built the garage and it's taken like two years just to build the garage but they do an awesome job and next next up they're going to knock down this house and do a new foundation and it's like it's you're really like wow this is cool and you're you're just always kind of along for the ride yeah so stud pack stud pack yep they're pretty right awesome on, that's awesome dude well thanks so much for hanging out with me man honestly it's been a good time anytime chatting. Yeah. anytime reach out anytime yeah dude it's it's good every time so i appreciate that anybody who could possibly have not already been to brian's channel bkxc check him out on youtube it's in show more as well those of you that um are new here for me Please hit subscribe, man. Even though we know the number means nothing, it means something <laughs> to me. <laughs>
do it. Yeah, hit thumbs up. If you're listening on the Apple podcast, do me a favor and uh, write a review. I think that um, the other one, what's the Spotify? They have something special going on over there too. So if you're listening on huh. Spotify, do the cool. thumbs up or whatever they got going on there. It helps mm-hmm. the uh, the podcast algorithm know what's up. And uh, like I said earlier, if you're thinking about a new bike, maybe check out Nari. Or if you want some new gear, swing by uh, Tasco MTB. Use code Biker, save some money. I do have a <laughs> pair of those light lightweight uh, shorts. I have a pair of those lightweight shorts, and they are definitely my number one. Like when it's a hot day, like oh, yeah. it's totally different than all my other shorts. Where it's like there's, it's like nothing. It's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> like I, you know, I go to them. Like no bullshit. The reason that I reached out to Nate and I was like, dude, I wore these shorts all summer. Anytime yeah. that they were dirty and I couldn't freaking wear them, I'm like irritated totally. about. It. <laughs> yeah, and I haven't taken any crashes where you would think that it's like more lightweight, so maybe it would tear easily versus some yeah. other shorts I have that like were brand new. I looked at them, I have this like big tear around like the the seam on the back, so it's like yeah. they've. Uh, I definitely give a thumbs up to the Tasco lights. Sorry to interrupt. No, dude. Hey, man, you're you're helping out. I guess now now you're gonna have to send Nate a bill though. By the way, uh, <laughs> BKXC did a a, a, a little uh, ad read for you. Uh, here's the I bill. don't do nothing for free. <laughs> Anyway, so if you guys want something for free, though, we do have something for free for you. Remember, it only takes a bike to be a biker. Get out and be one.